Michael Dosk is Kip McKinley, a 27 to 10 lead. He bounces off the defender. He's going to go in for the touchdown. Dave Gretzky. Thank you. No! St. Ignatius has won their ninth state title throw, and it is incomplete. It was buried by Ernest. That will seal it for Elder. Now, the tradition continues. The Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio News Network present the Ohio High School Football Championship. It's one of the most eagerly anticipated matchups of the six championship games in Northeast Ohio this weekend. As from Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Maslin, it's the defending Division II state champion Avon Lake Shoreman getting set to face the Columbus Brookhaven Bearcats in a battle of unbeatens this evening for the Division II championship. Hi everyone, I'm Marty Bass, along with Ryan Millard. We're glad you're with us here this evening on the Ohio News Network for, as I mentioned, a matchup that a lot of people have talked about leading up to this title game tonight. And Ryan, when you look at the offenses of these two teams, Avon Lake back with another great tailback in Bobby Doyle. Oh, definitely. And an explosive offense at that. You look at what they've done so far this season, a record of 14-0. and 0. It doesn't get that way unless you can put points on the board. They certainly have done that. Th over nearly 40 points per game they're averaging. Look at those yards running the ball and passing the ball. That's a total yards of 410 yards per game. Bobby Doyle, you'll see him there. He was the first team All-Ohio Division II Offensive Player of the Year. So as they go, as he goes, so do the Shoreman. And the goal tonight for the Columbus Brookhaven defense is to slow Bobby Doyle and that high-powered Shoreman attack down. And a lot of that rests on the shoulders of Dominic Jones. Dominic Jones is another All-Ohio performer. I mean, he comes into this football game anchoring a defense that, get that, has allowed just 5.5 points per game. They've had four shutouts. But look at what they're averaging on the ground. Any good defense has to shut down a running game. They really have shut down running games throughout the course of the year. That's why they're undefeated. That's why they have the right to play for a Division II state championship. A 29-game winning streak accompanies Avon Lake to this title game tonight. Brookhaven unbeaten. Stay with us. The starting lineups in the opening kickoff of the Division II title game for Maslin is coming up next right here on the Ohio News Network. The Ohio High School Athletic Association Football Championships are brought to you by Grange, your partner in protection. By the Ohio Education Association, great public schools for every child. And by Kevin Kurgis. Call the law offices of Kevin Kurgis at 1-877-4-KEVIN-4 for automobile accident injuries. It's the Division II State Championship game. Columbus Brookhaven at Avon Lake. It's coming up next only on the Ohio News Network. The excitement building here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Maslin as Columbus Brookhaven gets set to take on Avon Lake for the Division II State Championship. The first ever appearance in the state championships for a team from the Columbus City League. Avon Lake coached by Dave DeLugas. They're back to defend their Division II State Championship. Brookhaven won the toss, elected to defer, and there's the kick, and this much-anticipated game is underway. The kick will be fielded by Andrew Means of Avon Lake. It means in the middle field of the 15, trying to get to the outside. And gang tackle, the ball pops loose immediately, and Brookhaven has it, and going into the end zone for a Bearcat touchdown. Running into the end zone, scooping up that loose ball was Marvin Jones. Eight yards out, and just like that, Brookhaven's on top, six to nothing. How about Marvin Jones, a little opportunistic on the opening kickoff. You know the junior's going to run down the field and be excited about his first play in a state championship <laughs> game. And lo and behold, the pigskin pops out, number 10 scoops and scores. That's going to be one he'll remember for a while. Brookhaven, a very opportunistic team, forcing turnovers and taking advantage of those mistakes. And the ball punched out of the grasp of Andrew Means by... Idris Lawrence from Brookhaven, and just like that, the Bearcats grab the lead, six to nothing. And now there is a little confusion on the Brookhaven sideline as they have a player checking in late. As the extra point attempt coming up from Brookhaven's Philip Camaro, extra point attempt is up, and the extra point attempt is good, and just like that, it is 7-0 Brookhaven. You know, I was getting excited to talk a little bit about Brookhaven's defense and about how they like to fly around. Little did I know that their defense started on the opening kickoff with kickoff coverage, and it all, and it all takes place with the intensity and flying around. Uh, you know, Avon Lake's been here before. They were going to try to take it outside, even if... They didn't fumble on that particular play, Marty. That's a tackle inside the 20. You just saw the team speed for Columbus Brookhaven. There you see the resume that Avon Lake brings to this title game. 29 consecutive wins. Their last loss back in 2002 to Macedonia-Nordonia in the state semifinals. It's interesting to note 
that the quick score by Brookhaven brings to mind some of the things that's been said about this Bearcat team throughout its playoff run. In fact, Dayton Carroll head coach Steve Bartlett said, hey guys, make no mistake about it, you can't let anybody with that kind of speed and those kind of athletes get an early lead on you because they smell blood when things like that happen, like that turnover we just saw. A very aggressive, opportunistic team already has a touchdown advantage. Eight seconds in, that's got to be the close to the fastest touchdown in Division II state championship history. So Camaro gets up to kick it away again. Means is still back, and again, the kick coming towards Andrew Means. He'll field this one at the nine-yard line. He gets hit in the middle of the field and is slammed down just across the 20-yard line. As we told you, here's how this game got started. The Division II title game gets underway with a bang. Well, it's just a simple kickoff, and Avon Lake's trying to take it outside again. And it looked like... Uh, just one of the Bearcats, Idris Lawrence, Idris Lawrence yeah. makes the strip. And then we talk about opportunistic Marvin Jones with the touchdown, the junior coming through. That's got to feel good, huh, Marty? Absolutely. First to 10 for Avon Lake at their own 21-yard line. Keep an eye on number 38, Bobby Doyle, the explosive tailback, 2,592 yards. And there's the trigger man, quarterback Mike Tiff. 24 touchdown passes and just six interceptions. He's completed 57% of his throws. And he'll toss it to Bobby Doyle with Morello, the fullback, leading the way. And Doyle is thrown down after a short game. The Brookhaven defense, an impressive group, giving up just five points a game. The starting lineups in tonight's game brought to you by Donato's Pizza. Donato's respect the pizza. There you see the skill position players for Avon Lake. We've talked a lot about Bobby Doyle. Ian Pace, one of the top linemen for the Shoreman across the front. Along with returning starter, Jack Rufus from last year's championship team. Keep an eye out for this Brookhaven defense. A lot of talent all across that front, and especially the linebackers. Number four, Alex Daniels, a guy being recruited by the likes of Ohio State, Oklahoma, and LSU. Second down and eight after the two-yard Doyle pickup. Mike Tiff is rolling to throw it out. He wants to come to the near side. Puts this one into the air, and it is tipped away out of bounds. Near side. The pass was intended for six-year-old senior Trey Strauss, who set an Avon Lake single-season mark with 54 catches. Trey Strauss, even if he could get up and get that, you see 24 there for the Cats. That's Keith Massey. The six foot one senior, he could also has some leaping ability. He's got six interceptions on the on the year. He's also got a little bit of speed. You talk about this team speed as he jumps up, as Massey jumps up to get that. Here's a kid who was the City League 100 meter champion. So in this entire defense for the for the Brookhaven Bearcats has just got team speed. They fly around to the football constantly. One of the big matchups in tonight's game will be the play of the Brookhaven defensive backs against those talented wideouts, Trey Strauss and Andrew Means of Avon Lake. A third down and eight for the Shoreman, and Tiff again is going back to throw now. Has some time, and has coming out of the backfield, far side. That's the fullback, Morello, making the catch, but it is way shy of a first down. At the 26, a gain of just three, and the Shoreman will have to kick it away. Before Kevin, you got to feel good about having a three and out as you watch this pass play. Set up Tiff, getting a completion, getting some confidence. Brandon Harris on the stop for the Bearcats. Really did, did a good job in coverage. That's just one of those confidence builders because certainly they've got to punt it away and see if their defense can come out on the field now for the Shoreman and try to make something happen. Dominic Jones and... Ryan Wallace are back deep to field the punt of Trey Strauss. Gets off a very high kick. That will angle towards the far side. This is Jones dropping it, picking it back up, and then he down for a loss. As good coverage by Avon Lake special teams. A 33-yard kick, and down to make the tackle was Andrew Means for the Avon Lake Shoreman. We talked about the Shoreman offense being a, an explosive bunch. Let's don't overlook that Columbus Brookhaven outfit that's only averaging 38 points a game and rolling up almost 400 yards of total offense per outing. Yeah, that's not all bad, Marty. I'd take those numbers. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they do a pretty good job. Well, you know, and, and we talk about the kind of team speed that they have on the defensive side of the ball. It's not like they don't have any speed on the, on the, uh, on the offensive side as well. Mike McGee coming into this football game, nearly 2,000 yards throwing, and 21 touchdowns on the year. Out of the eye formation to get things started at their own 36 go the Bearcats. We'll tell you more about some of their skill people in a moment. They have the first play from Scribbage and Toss. And this is Antoine Roberts getting out across the 40-yard line to the 42, perhaps to the 43, as we continue checking your Donato's Pizza starting lineups in this championship game here tonight. The Brookhaven offense, there you get a look at the skill people. Antoine Roberts on the season with 1,317 yards. Charlie Ferris and Bison Culbertson, two of the big guys up front for the Bearcats, the champions of the Columbus City League and the Southwestern Conference champions. Avon Lake, their defense. Steven Zawatek, the Division II Defensive Player of the Year in Ohio, anchors that front line for the Shoreman. Second down and four. 
Jones sprints in motion to the near side. McGee on the give to the back coming out. That's Ryan Wallace trying to get to the outside. And a good job defensively by Avon Lake as Wallace tried to get to the outside. Andrew Means came up and grabbed him by the shirt and held on while help arrived. Andrew Means must be spending some time in the weight room on his forearm strength because he got by one arm. My man just uh, took him to the ground. But definitely, that was a that play was set up. As you, as you watch this, it's a little reverse to the split end. He's got some blockers out there. It looks to me like he had two Bearcat blockers to lead the way serious, for some serious yardage. Andrew Means made a huge play to set up a short yardage situation on third down. Just got with that big right hand and just held on. Third down and one, just shy of the 45. And off goes to Alex Daniels in the game at the pullback spot, and he does not get the first down. Alex Daniels, the 6'4", 230-pound senior, went straight up the middle that time and needed to get to the 46 and did not pick it up, no game. That was the Shoreman defensive line getting some pressure, getting good, a good jump off the ball. You'll watch the replay here. Watch the surge. All you see is white jerseys pushing back some blue jerseys. Dan Spring, Ryan, one of the linebackers, the first guy to put a hat on. Alex Daniels, and here's Dominic Jones to kick it away. Now, they're not afraid to do many different things out of this punt formation. Jones, in fact, in the playoffs, had a 65-yard fake punt run for a touchdown. He'll kick this one away. Angles off the side of his foot, takes a decent Brookhaven roll. We'll go inside the 20, inside the 15, and continues to wobble and wobble and wobble even some more. It is still going and is now finally down to inside the 10-yard line at the 6, and that's where Avon Lake will put its offense onto the field. 49-yard kick, 8-27 remains in the first period here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Massillon, Brookhaven, 7-0. Under the lights at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Maslin, along with Ryan Miller, I'm Marty Bannister. The third member of our crew tonight is Erica Robbins, and we'll be hearing from her throughout the evening. As Dave Delugas is Avon Lake Shoreman, find themselves down 7-0 here in the Division II State Championship game. Certainly an unaccustomed position for a team that's won 29 straight games. In the playoffs, they've given up 9, 7, and 14 points, and that's it in three games. Line up the tight end Simmons to the far side. And Doyle with the carry and gets out across the 10 yard line and had to fight for every yard that he got to Bobby Doyle again. Hands reaching around and grabbing Doyle as he started through the hole. Well, Bobby Doyle is going to get his yards today, Marty. He comes into this football game over 2,500 yards and 41 touchdowns on the defending state championship team that's just rolled off 29 straight wins. So, I mean, here he is. And check out those numbers. He takes the spot of a guy last year who only ran for 2,659 yards and 32 touchdowns and John Schroeder combined 5,251 yards and 73 touchdowns out of the two tailbacks for Avon Lake the last two years. Remarkable numbers. A lot of the credit's got to go to those guys up front. This is Doyle again on a second and five call. Needs to get to the 16 for a first down and is just shy. You talk about the, the numbers that a Doyle puts up or a John Schroeder. And look at that offensive line, Ryan. They returned just one starter from that club last year. And that's Jack Rufus at the right tackle. And it also tells me that the offensive game plan and the, and the coaching is top notch. Absolutely. Anytime you can continue to implement a scheme and get production and productivity, whether or not the, the parts can be interchangeable, that means your coaching is rock solid. Third down and two from their own 14, and it's a handoff up the middle again, and it's Doyle again. And Doyle again needed to get to the 16, and we have not had a chance to see where the ball was spotted yet, but it looks like it's going to be close. The official is calling timeout. The referee tonight is Larry Bartlett, Doug Ayers, James McGrath, Gene Yanucci, and Robert Stayak form the remainder of that officiating crew. And it is good enough for Avon Lake first down. Seven minutes to go, first period. That's a huge first down considering the, the great punt that Brookhaven got off. Just to get it out of, out of your own end zone so you can at least start to have some kind of field position, even if you had to punt it away at this point. At least you made a first down in this particular drive. Avon Lake generates 408 yards per game of total offense. Brookhaven's opponents just a punt 16. And this is Boyle again. You know, the great thing about a guy like Doe, 5'11", 195 pounds, not the biggest guy in the world, but very durable as... 356 carries would attest to. 
Well, yeah, 356 carries, you better be durable. <laughs> You're not going to be in there too long. But, yeah, he's definitely the, been the workhorse. I think the coach, uh, Lucas, even said after last week's game, you know, we put the saddle on him and rode him last week. It seems to me like this week they're putting, getting the saddle back out because it looks like it could be the Bobby Doyle show. It's kind of their bread and butter. But they're not afraid to throw, but they have to set up the run with play action passing, and they haven't had a chance to do a lot of that yet. It's Doyle again. And the 30, uh, I'm sorry, the 26 yard line is the first down marker, and Doyle again brought down shy. The Brookhaven defense led by Alex Daniels at the linebacker spot, highly recruited. Weak side linebacker and also, of course, Dominic Jones, the free safety. There you see some of the stingy numbers that they've given up. Dominic Jones said earlier in the week, hey, we take it personally when somebody scores on us. We don't like that. It's an insult. And that's the attitude you like to have out of the defense. Third down and four. Tim will look to throw. Rush down to the pocket. Sets and delivers far side and overthrows the intended receiver. Strauss had gotten behind the defensive back. That was Idris Lawrence. Strauss able to get behind him, but Tiff just couldn't connect. Strauss, that, he had six written all over it. And Tiff, you, you can't blame Tiff. As you watch here, this is the athleticism. Look at the blue jerseys flying all over the place, coming at him. Tiff just had to throw it out there. And, oh, he'd like to have that one back. Tried to hit the cutoff man. You know, Tiff plays a little baseball, too. Absolutely. Fourth down call up coming. Been interesting to see if... Strauss would have caught that pass. Idris Lawrence is a 4-4 guy at the 40. That's been an interesting matchup right there. So Strauss on to kick it away. And again, Wallace is back deep. One of the two deep backs. And also Dominic Jones. And this will be Jones for Columbus Brookhaven at the 40-yard line. His own for him, trying to string it to the near side. Finds a little gap. Gets into Avon Lake territory. And still finds some room. Now dances back. Dominic Jones looking for running with doing his all on his own right now. A flag comes in. But some of this is probably coming back. But it was exciting while it lasted. Yeah, it definitely was. I mean, <laughs> number two for the Brookhaven Bearcats. you got to get everybody to try to break down and make a tackle on him because there was little shades of Ted Ginn Jr. on that play, trying to turn it back and, and run it all over the field. Hey, when you're running around like crazy like that, every once in a while you're going to have a face mask because guys are flailing at you trying to trying to make a tackle. Well, instead of some of this coming back, add on to it, the face mask call. Personal foul, face mask, 15 yards. First down. Referee Larry Bartlett explaining the infraction against Avon Lake. You'll get a look at it here. Watch some of these moves here. First of all, okay, he breaks one tackle there, cuts up field, decides to break another tackle there, cut it back against the grain, then he cuts back. That was when the face mask came in. So, yeah, you got you to give, uh, you know, Jones some credit with uh, some of those some of those maneuvers. That's, that's pretty pretty impressive. First down and 10 at the Avon Lake 26 for Brookhaven's offense. Jones speeds in motion and McGee wants to throw. Rolling, rolling, looking and the pass is caught inside the 10 yard line and sliding down after making the catch was Jones who went in motion to start that play and Brookhaven has a first and goal now inside the Avon Lake 10. Look who that is, Tim Harris. I'm sorry, not Tim Harris. That's, that's Marvin Jones who uh, scored the touchdown on the opening kickoff. Hey, how about the junior coming up with two huge plays to start the game? Five feet, four inches tall, Marvin Jones at a buck 40, but he's played big here early on. There are his regular season numbers, including playoffs, 13 receptions, and a big one right there. Mike McGee, 98 of 221 coming into the game, throwing the ball, but his pitch and catch with Jones has Brookhaven first and goal. This is Alex Daniels in the game at the fullback spot, and Daniels finding the running room very difficult to come by in his couple of carries. And brought down after a short game, the line of scrimmage was a six. In fact, they might say that he lost a half yard or so, Ryan. Well, you had Dan Spring in there, Stevens Watek, Jack Rufus. You had the entire, look at the defensive front for the Shoreman. Wow, that's impressive to get up, get off the ball, and just have a surge in the backfield. It's almost like they need the snap count, Marty. Scott Bennett, six foot, 226 pound senior across that front. They lost all but one starter on the offensive line to the storm, and they lost all but one starter on the defensive line. That's Steven Zawatek, the defensive player of the year in Division II. And here's McGee looking to throw it out. Pass the time, flushed out of the pocket. McGee looking, lost it into the end zone. Touchdown, Columbus Brookhaven. Into the end zone, and catching that for the Bearcats, going down to his knees was Anthony Harris. Here's another junior stepping up and making a play in the state championship game. 
for the Bearcats. You know, the Bearcats can score in bunches. And as of right now, as you watch the play, and this is a great job by McGee, because a lot of guys would have tucked it and tried to run and make something out of it. He kept his head upfield and looked and found Anthony Harris for the touchdown. Right now, Marty, with the momentum and the excitement and the enthusiasm, you can tell it's all with the Bearcats. The extra point attempt by Kamara is up and good. It is 14-0 in favor of Columbus Brookhaven. The touchdown pass capping off a three-play 26-yard drive, Ryan. Yeah, you look here as he rolls to his right. He's got an opportunity to tuck it and run, but he keeps his head up, and that's when he finds Anthony in the end zone. 26-yard scoring drive. It took a buck 18 off of this first period clock. And Ryan mentioned quick strikes. How do these numbers grab you? In the Dayton Carroll State semifinal last week, Brookhaven scored three touchdowns in four minutes and 12 seconds. In their regional semifinal win over Pickering and Central, how's 24 points in seven minutes grab you? Pretty impressive. I, I mean, you know, you look at the speed they have out there. That's why they've been able to score so quick. The talent was phenomenal. I know the coach last week that they played against said that this team is just too phenomenally skilled. And uh, so far we've seen that skill make big plays. You know, you can have all the skill in the world, but you still have to make a play. And that's what these guys so far for the Cats have done. They've gone out and made some plays. The key now is for the Shoremen to try to calm down, relax, and make something out of this possession. Okay, get some positive things happening because the Cats, before you know it, they can run away with things. A recap of the scoring drive, and Anthony Harris getting congratulations from his teammates as Kamara kicks it away. A bounder that will be picked up far side for Avon Lane. And that's Max Schmidt coming to the 30-yard line where he is brought down. The weather information you need when you need it is on the Ohio News Network. Ohio weather on the 10s, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It's fast, it's accurate, and you bet it's reliable. Get it only on ONN and ohionewsnow.com. Speaking of weather, 30 degrees to kick off tonight. 25 degree wind chill with winds out of the west at about 5 mile an hour and the humidity at 59%. First down to 10 for Avon Lake, and this is Tiff handing off to Doyle and finding again the run was very difficult to come by as Brookhaven had all the holes plugged that time as Doyle started to the left side and then on the tackle for Brookhaven, Melvin Jackson, middle linebacker, 5'10", 212 pound senior. Melvin Jackson, another one of these Bearcats that tries to fly around and set the tone by, by making big time hits. This team defensively for the Bearcats, they like to set the tone. They've got a little bit of a personality. They play with a swagger. They're exciting. They're, they're this new kind of football player that's going out and trying to make some plays. You can tell each one of them's got a little bit of an individualistic deal going on with their uniform. They just like to make some plays. Here's Tiff to throw in a little play fake and Incomplete. The flag is down as well as he was looking for Trey Strauss. Keith Massey was on coverage for Columbus Brookhaven. As was intended for Trey Strauss. It is pass interference against the Brookhaven Bearcats. But Ryan, you were talking earlier about the, the mindset and the, and the attitude of Columbus Brookhaven. And we had a chance to spend some time with both teams. Defensive pass interference, 15 yards, automatic first down. We saw both teams come onto the field and run around their locker rooms. And Avon Lake, obviously, a very confident bunch when they arrived for the game tonight. But there seemed to be something about that Brookhaven team, just an air about them that they know they're supposed to be here. This is not a mistake. No, definitely. They've got a lot of confidence. I mean, they are a very confident bunch, and they're excited to come out here and show everybody what they've got. They want to, quote, unquote, shock the world against the defending state champs. They wouldn't have it any other way. Here's a toss to Doyle, and as he started through the hole, Curtis King. 5'10", 235-pound junior for Brookhaven was there to meet him. Anth uh, Brandon Crowder, a 6'2", 202-pound senior, was there as well, too. Brookhaven's defense allowing just 48 yards per game on the ground this season to its opponents. The 14 points, by the way, that Avon Lake has given up to this juncture of the game. That's the most they've given up. It ties the high watermark in their four prior playoff games. Last week beating Talmadge, 33 to 14. A little option toss, Doyle drops it, and will just cover doing the wise thing at the 44-yard line, and will lose three yards. That was a recipe for disaster, Marty. So that was a smart play by Doyle to come in as a senior. When you bobble a pitch like that, hey, if, if you're Tiff and you've got the option call, there it is. He pitches it to 38, Bobby Doyle. Pounce on that football and just, hey, let's go in, back into the huddle and regroup. 
and get out there. So far, Doyle, nine attempts, two yards, seven of them have been for two yards or less. How about that? So the Brookhaven Bearcats, we talked about the team speed, and they're showing it right now defensively. Doyle, a guy that could get going though when need be on this third and 13. Tift is dropping back to throw down. Let's set up a little screen that does far side. And making the catch is Morello with the back. And Morello is dropped at the midfield stripe, but it's still way shy of the first down. Dominic Jones, a hard-hitting free safety up to make the play. Hey, I what I tell you? The, guy, the guys have got some swagger. The guys have played with a little personality. They play with some confidence. They play with emotion. And that's certainly something that right now they've got the edge in this football game. Watch number two as a blur into the screen. Lays the hammer down. Boy, be the you know the old adage when you're playing defense, Marty. It's be the hammer, not the nail. Dominic Jones certainly was the hammer on that last play. In 2003, Dominic Jones was Ohio's defensive player of the year for Division Two. Strauss is kick. This is a pretty good one. This will be fielded by Wallace on the goal near side for Fort Haven, and takes a couple of pretty good shots and he dropped shy of the 20-yard line at the 19 with 40 seconds remaining in this first period here in Maslin with a 14 to nothing advantage for Columbus Brookhaven. Again, another big time possession here uh, defensively for Avon Lake. They got to try to step up and make something happen. The game's played earlier today. Ryan and I had the pleasure of calling the hard northern win over Norwalk St. Paul, the Division VI game. 20 to 8, the final there. And Youngstown Cardinal Mooney, congratulations to that ball club as it captures the Division IV championship, beating for sales by the count of 28 to 6. Over at Fawcett Stadium at Canton, big plays, a big part of that game. Cardinal Mooney able to capitalize on some opportunities and run away from Versailles for a state championship. Brookhaven with the 14-0 lead. They go to Antoine Roberts and the tailback trying to get to the outside, but great pursuit by Avon Lake's defense. Andrew Means and Tony Smirk, the nose guard, collaborate on the tackle. How about Tony Smirk coming through? Flag down as well. And the hold against Brookhaven. Smirk, a 5'10", 230-pound senior. And Andrew Means, a 6'2", 205-pound senior. <laughs> Interesting to, to talk about the fact that both these football teams were in class today, being a night game. Both coaches talked, again, week long about, hey, yeah, it's the biggest game we'll play, but we can't make it bigger than what it is. Keep the same routine. The Bearcats did not. Holding. On the offense, half the distance, repeat, first down. They failed to take part in any of the pregame pleasantries, such as a trip to the Hall of Fame or the pregame dinner. They said, hey, it's a football game. We're going to do what we've done all season. We're going to school. They left Columbus about 2.40 this afternoon. Tom Blake's team heading up here for this game. Avon Lake did the same thing. In fact, Dave DeLugas canceled a pep rally earlier in this week. The cheerleaders came to him and said, hey, can we have a pep rally? And he was, no. We're playing football. We don't need all this ancillary stuff. You know, as much as I like all the, everything that you just said, I like except for canceling the pep rally because that's about the school and everything. And, and you know, if you've got that good of a team, you know, coach, schedule a pep rally maybe first game of the year. Make it more like a normal game. I mean, come on, you're gonna tell the whole school and the cheerleaders and stuff not to not to have a pep rally. Give me a break. This is high school, man. This isn't college. Come on. Big fan of pep rallies, huh? No, I, I, I've never been to one, but I'm just saying, I mean, if the kids want a pep rally, let them have a pep rally. Come on. Come on. You never went to a pep rally? No, I don't think I've ever been to a pep rally. My school's never got to the state championship, <laughs> man. <laughs> you must have not read my transcripts. Prior to the snap, full start, half the distance, first down. So with 20 seconds left, the penalty again pushes Brookhaven back even further now. Back to their own three-yard line where they face a first and 26 with the clock rolling and 17 seconds left. Tom Blake in his second year at Brookhaven, 27 and 1, his one loss record. Here's McGee to throw the pass, is tipped to the line of scrimmage and falls. Fortunately for Brookhaven, incomplete in the end zone. Look at the big paw of Scott Bennett in the end zone was Will, number, big number 72, six foot, 226 pounds senior. Getting a press on the quarterback. You see McGee about to drop back. Sure enough, that was him, Scott Bennett. Boy, I tell you what, that was so close to Zwatek getting, getting a pick six there. Boy, would have that changed the game in a heartbeat. Seven seconds remaining in this first quarter. There you see Scott Bennett. This defensive line, according to Dave Belugas, came together in camp. Turning just one starter, Zwatek. Smart group, too. These guys across the front all 3.2 GPAs or better. Lake. And this is Alex Daniel trying Alex to get to the outside and his shoulder to the turf as he tried to turn it up. 
to the outside. Trey Strauss went low to put Daniels down, and that will do it for an explosive first period here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Massillon. Columbus Brookhaven challenging for the state championship. Lead the defending title holders, Avon Lake, by a couple of scores in the first period. The Ohio High School Athletic Association Football Championships are brought to you by the Ohio Association of Public School Employees. By STAND, Ohio's anti-tobacco movement created for youth, by youth. By Ohio Parents for Drug-Free Youth. Don't be a party to teenage drinking. Parents who host, they lose the most. And by Donato's Pizza, edge to edge with great tasting toppings. Donato's always respect the pizza. Along with Ryan Miller, Erica Robbins, and our entire Ohio News Network crew, I'm Marty Bannister, 14 to nothing. Columbus Brookhaven leads Avon Lake as we battle for the Division II state championship here this evening. And a Brookhaven drive that has really had the wheels come off of it here early on. This flag will be waved off against Tom Blake's team. Guard the foul. And they've had a very difficult possession here starting close to their own goal line. Yeah, it has been difficult. Marred with penalties, and now it looks like they've had some kind of confusion to where they're going to need to take a timeout. Um, so, well, yeah, this, you hate to burn timeouts on something like that. You're absolutely right. If you're Avon Lake, it's time to regroup, okay? This is an opportunity to get some good field position, march down the field, get a score, start to feel good about yourself so you can go into the locker room with some positive momentum. Right now, they need some kind of enthusiasm, some energy, some excitement. Shoot, maybe they need a pep rally over on that sideline because right now, all the enthusiasm and excitement, and I don't know if it was predicated upon just that opening play or if it's just because coming out of the locker room, Brookhaven was ready to play. Right now, the enthusiasm coming from the Brookhaven Bearcat sideline. You're big on that pepper, I think, aren't you? Yeah, I'd like to have it. <laughs> <laughs> Dave DeLuguez and Tom Blake going head-to-head, -head, the respective coaches. And Tom Blake, we talked to him prior to the game this evening, and was very relaxed walking around. He was a little bit in awe of what he saw. He walked into the visitor's locker room here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium, saw all the signs on the board and all the things in the locker room, knowing that this is a locker room that's held uh, many great players and just uh, really enjoying the moment, I think, more than anything. Third and 25 at their own four-yard line. McGee will look to throw now. Far side sideline, and the pass is incomplete. No flag. Dominic Jones was the intended receiver, and that'll bring up a fourth down now for Brookhaven. Almost looks as if Dominic Jones is trying to maybe get a flag to be thrown that particular play. That's an un, that uncatchable ball, and he's going to try to run into the defensive back and fall down. Anyway, you look at it, the Shoreman are going to have some good field position. It's just a matter of hanging on to the football, trying to do, continue to do some things offensively. And, you know, I know they haven't had much success right now with Doyle, and he's the running back that's done everything for them all year long. But, hey, you keep chipping at the rock, you keep chipping at the rock, eventually that thing is going to break. So you know, I wouldn't abandon the running game just yet if I'm sitting there over on the sideline with the Sherman. Schmidt and Strauss are back deep to field the punt. This one goes straight up into the air. Very short kick. 49 was the first kick, and this one with the line of scrimmage being the four-yard line is going to roll dead inside the 20-yard line. What a break. In fact, they'll say right at the 20, so a 16-yard kick for Dominique Jones. You know, I said they were going to have good field position, Marty, but I didn't realize they were going to have this good a field position. This is just great. You know what? That's almost because of the pressure that was supplied by Tony Smirk. Right up the gut, pr uh, providing pressure. Dominic Jones gets a bad foot on the football. Perhaps the break that Avon Lake needed to spark, because uh, quite honestly, we were talking about during the break, Brookhaven looked to be the, the aggressor and have a lot of momentum going the way. Avon Lake, I don't want to say, you don't want to say intimidated because they're not, but they just looked a little unsure of themselves to start this game. So they have a first and 10 now at the Bearcats 17 with a golden opportunity here down by a couple of scores. Tip is rolling to throw after the play thing. Looks and fires the pass is knocked away. Great coverage by Brookhaven again that time. Sean Loney was over there. Also, Idris Lawrence. Idris Lawrence, Keith Massey, these defensive backs right now for the Bearcats. They're all over the field, but here's a, here's a situation right now for the Shoreman where you've got to come away with something here. You've got to come away with some kind of points. And try to get some positive yards right now in second down, so you've got a manageable third down, Marty. And Ryan, I, I would have to think Tom Blake likes this situation, having a team try to throw against those defensive backs, Lawrence, Jones, Loney, and Massey. I think he likes his chances there. Well, he's got probably one of the best core group of defensive backs collectively. I'm talking tackling, hitting, running to the football speed. Probably in Division 2. Speaking of speed, there's Alex 
Daniels tracking down Bobby Doyle and throwing him for a loss back across the 20-yard line. I don't know if this was Spider-Man after the play or what, but wow. watch this. Number four is just going to come running into your screen, make the tackle, get up. He's going to do a little dance. Look at him. He's, he's something else. I'm telling you what, this team, you know, call them what you want to call them. I mean, they're flat out good. They're good football players that, are, that try to set the tone by flying around and making big plays. We've already seen as many big plays as I've seen in a lot of high school football games during the course of this regular season. Third and 14 for Avon Lake. They're one of four on third down attempts to this juncture of the game. And Tim is going back to throw now. He looks towards the end zone now, and the pass is caught for a touchdown. It's Trey Strauss making the catch. Oh, what a throw by Tiff. Threw it right over Keith Massey's shoulder and threw it to the 6'4", Strauss, who went up and grabbed it. Touchdown, Shoreman. Keith Massey was on the play, but Mike Tiff connecting with Trey Strauss. It seems like they've done that before, 12 times before to be exact. And watch this. Just thread the needle, throws the perfect strike as you watch. Strauss go up and get it and catch his... 13th touchdown reception of the year. So taking advantage of the 16-yard punt, the Shoreman put it in the end zone. Trey Strauss headed to Iowa to continue his football playing days. The extra point attempt is up by John Lyons and good, and it is 14-7. to and As we talked about, Ryan, an opportunity for Avon Lake and defending champions take advantage of those mistakes. You're absolutely right, and that is just what the doctor ordered. If you can look right now at Strauss getting, the, uh, getting those crowd pumped up. I mean, that's exactly what they needed at this particular point. All right, as mentioned, the third member of our broadcast crew tonight is Erica Robbins. Thanks, Marty. We are down on the sidelines, and the Avon Lake crowd is happy, and I found a fan who is extra happy. This is Dan Urban. He is a parent of number 37, Mike Urban, a co-captain, but Mike has an interesting story. He was injured on October the 22nd in a game, basically fell 10 feet and landed on his head and became paralyzed over a weekend, but he's back on the field tonight. Yes, he's, uh, it's been quite a blessing to get him back to where he wanted to be. We have very good doctors who uh, got him back, but Mike is also a very determined individual, and he fought all his way to get back to play tonight. And that wasn't even his first injury in his high school career. No, he had uh, spine fuse back in 10th grade. He was a starter uh, in 10th grade on the varsity, and after the fourth game, he went off for the year and fought to get back last year and played all 15 games last year and came back with the state championship team as a starter. Okay, thanks, Dan Urban. Look for number 37, Mike Urban, on the field. We'll go back up to the press box to Marty and Ryan. Mike Urban, a 5'11", 200-pound senior. That's a great story right there. That's something that, boy, I think every parent can, can sympathize with and uh, knowing and hoping you can get your offspring back in, up and rolling, and Mike Urban back for Avon Lake tonight. So the touchdown makes it 14-7, to the Brookhaven lead. There is a flag down on the field. We have encroachment. On the receiving team, five yards. I'll be honest with you. even kicked. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that in a state championship game. The receiving team lining up offsides. Wonder if Brookhaven was thinking onside kick. Could be. So, tack five yards on as they're receiving scoring drive. 17 yards following the short punt. Here is a kick by Lyons. This one will sail not quite into the end zone. And coming out is Antoine Roberts, and he just ran straight up the middle of the field with a nice return out to the 28-yard line. Of course, in high school football, balls kicked into the end zone. I'm not going to come out to the 20. So Brookhaven will have it first down and 10, and there you watch Roberts. Another, we're, we keep talking about speed for Brookhaven, but there's another one. They just keep coming at you in waves of speed. So let's see if uh, old Antoine Roberts, seven touchdown runs in the postseason so far this year. We'll see what, uh, what this offense can do after they've uh, been scored upon. McGee will hand off, and the ball pop loose. Avon Lake says it's theirs, and it is. The Sharman come away with another Brookhaven mistake. The fumble recovered by Jack Rufus. So Brookhaven, a short punt and now a turnover. And Avon Lake again with great field position. Just like that, we've talked about big plays. Jack Rufus coming up with the biggest play for the Shoreman so far. After they scored a touchdown, the defense stepping up. 
causing a big play. It looked like the Bearcats had some confusion. The snap just wasn't on the right. The snap count just didn't seem to time up with the, the line getting off the ball. And everything, that just play didn't, didn't look right. First down of 10 for Avon Lake. They put Doyle in motion and tip back to throw now. And the pass is incomplete. He was looking again for Trey Strauss, a play similar to the one they scored the touchdown on. Why wouldn't you go back to a rule of thumb in your coach? Next, the play after a turnover, go back and throw deep, try to catch him sleeping. And here's Tip back to pass, just threw it maybe a little too far. I know Strauss can get up and get him. That one might have been just a little too high. Mike Tiff, a six foot senior, backed up last year's starting quarterback, Tyler Boer. And there was some admitted concern by the Avon Lake coaches whether or not Tiff could handle everything. They knew he had a great arm, as mentioned he's a baseball player, but they have been so impressed with the way he picked up everything, the intricacies of this Avon Lake offense. And here he is again looking to throw for the near side corner, and Strauss again was the intended receiver. Also, Andrew Means was in the area of that, and the incompletion will bring up a third down. Keith Massey in on coverage for Brookhaven. Ryan was talking speed a moment ago. Keith Massey, the 100-meter champion in the Columbus City League. Also, Idris Lawrence, the other corner, a 4-4-40 guy, and he was the 20 and his long jump, 22 feet in City League track meets. Lots of speed, lots of athletic ability. Third down to 10 for Avon Lake at the Bearcat 27. And as Doyle goes in motion, flags come in. Interesting, Ryan, the little change they've made now, putting Doyle in motion now to try to get him the football, perhaps get him to the corner a little quicker. Yeah, and, and they seem to be have abandoned the, the conventional running game as they knew it during the course of the season. We have encroachment on the offense. Five yards, repeat, third down. Reason being is the fact that they've been having some success throwing the football, and they feel like they can stretch maybe this Brookhaven defense, which... Hey, I mean, if, if you can beat this Brookhaven defensive back, this collection of defensive backs, more power to you. And so far, they've been able to hit him on a couple of big plays. So after the penalty against Avon Lake, they'll offset the eye, make it third and 15. Now back at the 32, and tipped again is back to throw now. Pass the time, it looks to the near side. The pass is juggled and dropped. Trey Strauss and Keith Massey were together. And the incompletion brings up fourth down for Avon Lake. Mike Tift, a 57% completion rate entering tonight's game. Massey and Strauss are going to get to know each other really well before <laughs> it's all said and done today because Tift and Strauss have got a, a special connection that they've had just during the course of this regular season, and Massey doing a great job of breaking on the football and disrupting Strauss as he was trying to haul it in. So on fourth down and 15, Avon Lake will play. As Tiff operates over center, Charlie Gardner. And again, he'll go back to throw out. This time he's looking for Andrew Means, and Means was turning in, and Tiff threw the pass out incomplete. Typical miscommunication as you watch Tiff as he's walking off the field. He's yelling, What's, what in the world's going on? I thought my man was running a corner, and he's running a post. Well, Means probably is thinking the same, you know, Means as you saw him cutting across our screen. Either he ran the wrong route or Tiff thought he, he was uh, supposed to run a different route. Regardless, it's fourth down, or it's turnover on downs now. Ball with the Bearcats. So the Brookhaven defense able to bail out the offense after that turnover. That's huge. To put the fire out like that, Marty, those are, those are game changers. So now motion across the front. Charlie Ferris, the left guard, jumped prior to the ball being snapped. The 5'10", 250-pound junior. Four juniors and a senior across that offensive line for Brookhaven. The senior is Bison Culberson. Prior to the snap, well started. David Mann, Charlie Ferris, Mark Jackson, Thomas Ward, and Preston King will split time at that right guard spot tonight for the Bearcats. You know, this this offensive team, they start nine juniors and two seniors. You know, it's a pretty young club. I mean, you want to talk about a coach being maybe excited about having a lot of guys coming back. Fifth penalty tonight against Brookhaven. Here's Antoine Roberts skirting through a hole and on the run across the 40 yard line. Across the 40 and a first down for Brookhaven. Look at how quick those feet are, Marty. I mean, he, he did it last week and he just continues to pick him up and lay him down. Last week, I think he had 159 yards on 19 carries and two touchdowns. This week, look at him with the balance, too, and stay and get up field. 18 yards on that pickup for Antoine Roberts. He's a guy who, a couple of weeks back against Uniontown Lake, in a regional final game, 
ran for 165 yards in muddy conditions at Mansfield's Arlen Field, including a couple of touchdown runs, one of 62, one of 74, and that's in the mud. And it's Roberts again on first and 10 from the 45, their own 45. Roberts. Shy of the midfield stride, bringing a good look at the 5'10 senior. 1,317 yards for the Bearcats' top runner this season, Antoine Roberts. Really making a name for himself his senior year. You know, anytime you go into your senior season, you want to make a statement. You want to leave with some great memories. Well, certainly, it's been an outstanding year for the Brookhaven Bearcats, going undefeated, being ranked number two all season long in Division II. And here he is. Uh, the top tailback on the number two team in the state for his senior year, playing like a champion tonight. Dominic Jones into the game, and he goes in motion to the top of your screen, and they'll toss it again to Roberts. Shorman territory, 40 yard line, 35 30, and this is the big race. Roberts to the inside 10, he inside the 10, and brought down. It's a first and goal upcoming for Brookhaven. Chris Rao and Andrew Means showed a lot of speed there because An Antoine Roberts has certainly got a lot of speed, and he had a couple of Shorman chase him down they might have had the angle regardless chasing him down is one heck of a run after 45 yard pickup for the bearcats look at that so up 14 to 7 and after coming up with a stop on downs brookhaven answers with an impressive drive as they push back into shoreman territory first and goal coming at the seven yard line looks like alex daniels is checking into the game every once in a while might like to check him into the offensive set add a little power a little punch and it looks for number four to be, either be a lead or to get the ball on this play because he's such a big, strong, physical, athletic player. Look at him. He's going to be in the dotted eye there. Melvin Jackson, Lamont Moorfield also in the three-man Brookhaven backfield. Uh, first and goal at the Avon Lake 7, and now flags come in at the lay coming up here against the Bearcats. So from first and goal at the 7, it will now become first and goal at the 12. Boy, those are penalties like that that just drive you nuts for your coach. Dead ball, delay a game, five yards, repeat, first down. They'll drive you nuts, Marty. They'll have you laying awake at night, <laughs> losing sleep over those kind of penalties. I mean, those are the kind of things that just, you know, fortunately that they're still, for the Bearcats, they still have an opportunity here 12 yards from the goal line. And here is McGee on the play fake, rolling the throw with it now. Fires on a line to Melvin Jackson. And loses his balance for Gaines and gets inside the 10 and almost back to the original line of scrimmage after the penalty. Melvin Jackson, who in a game earlier this year caught 10 passes, makes the reception there. And he got to the seven yard line. Jack Rufus in on the stop for Avon Lake. So a second and goal now at the eight yard line. Watch McGee here as he gets the ball to Jackson. Melvin Jackson. Does a great job of keeping his feet with the hand down on the on the ground. And like Marty said, he gets back to the line of scrimmage, so hey, no harm, no foul. Back to where he started. Like I said, the eight, it is the seven-yard line. Dominic Jones will start in motion for Brookhaven. McGee, an inside fake and an outside handoff. And here's Dominic Jones racing to the near side. Jones throws his shoulder and powers into the end zone. Touchdown, Brookhaven. That's just a football player there, my friend. That's just a football player. He shows the speed to get to the outside, and then he can sniff the end zone, so he lowers his head and gets down in there. There is a flag down, however, and it's against Brookhaven. An illegal shift against the Bearcats, so take the score away. But here's the play, Marty. He just lowers his shoulder, and he's not going to be denied of that goal line. Referee Larry Bartlett will tell us about the penalty. We have an illegal shift on the offense. Five yards, repeat, second down. Seventh penalty against Brookhaven in this first half. The fourth five-yard penalty against the Bearcats. Always great to have Tom Boschenik situated to our left. Oh, is that Best stat man in the business. Boy, is that an understatement, man? Are you kidding me? Takes a lot to make you and I look good. Amen. Tommy does a pretty good job at it. Hey, just ask my wife. <laughs> Saw those rushing numbers a moment ago. Here's McKee to throw. Dominic Jones makes the catch in space. What a move to the five-yard line. And it was knocked down shy of the goal line. You want to talk about a move here. This again. I mean, here's, here's a kid that plays, you know, on the defense, he makes the first team all Ohio defensively. He's going to come out here and try to make some plays as a wide. This is a quick hitch from McGee. Oh, look at him break down. Looks like Andrew Means in that play. Good tackle by Means, but that was a great move. Oh, that was a great yeah. move. Unbelievable move. And Means still had it and managed to bring him down and save the touchdown. 
an Avon Lake defense that we talked about Brookhaven being very stingy. I don't take anything away from his Avon Lake defense. They allowed just 10 points per game this season and just 86 yards through the air. McGee hands off Alex Daniels, touchdown, Brookhaven. Well, a lot of that's just a flat out wide open hole. You've got to give credit where credit's due. And the, the guys up front, the big guys who averaged 265 pounds across that front, those big hogs, well, we'll call them Bearcats today, but they're hogs because they can just watch this, watch this hole here. And I know Alex Daniels is going to run hard, but he didn't have anyone touch him until he was in those tiger stripes in that Maslin end zone. Alex Daniels with the score. It's now 20 to 7 in favor of. Columbus Brookhaven, Camara on to try the extra Michael point, McGee, snap, Michael. kick up and good by Camara and the lead now at 21 to 7 for the unbeaten Columbus Brookhaven Bearcats taking on Avon Lake in this Division 2 state title game tonight here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. A couple of championships have already been claimed today. Congratulations to Dola Harden Northern and also to Youngstown Cardinal Mooney and the winner of this game will join that duo as champions on this first day of this two days of high school football championships here in the state of Ohio. Well, we knew it was going to be a good one tonight. We knew we were going to see some athleticism. If you've just tuned in, you've, you've missed some, some serious athleticism. It started from the opening kickoff, Marty, where the Brookhaven Bearcats pounced on a fumble, scooped and scored. We've seen some turnovers. We've seen some fumbles. We've seen some athleticism out of Avon Lake. So this is, so far, it's been everything It's been uh, it was talked about being. We've seen a lot of more points maybe. I didn't think we were going to see 28 points already with just under eight minutes to play in the second quarter. The two defenses that combined give up 15 per game. 21-7 our score right now. Half dozen plays on the scoring drive for Brookhaven. 68 yards, 2 minutes, 26 seconds. Alex Daniels with the touchdown run. Of course, one of the big plays was that 45-yard scamper by Brookhaven tailback Antoine Roberts. So Means, Schmidt, and Doyle are back deep. And here is the kick, and this will be middle of the field. This will be... Andrew Means slipping down as he started to turn it up across the 25-yard line out to the 27, and that's where Avon Lake will start with 7.50 to go here in this second quarter. The Columbus Brookhaven Bearcats led by the offensive prowess of Alex Daniels capitalize on a Avon Lake turnover and scored it go up by a couple. The Ohio High School Athletic Association Football Championships are being brought to you by Marathon. Put the happy holidays this year with the new Marathon gift card. By Advance Auto Parts, for the best part, people in price were ready in advance. By Playing Against Sports Stores of Ohio, where we buy, sell, and trade. Remember us for your holiday shopping. And by the Ohio Army National Guard. Learn how you can make a difference. Call 1-800-GO-GUARD. So far, Tiff, coming to this football game, I know we uh, passed for 115 completions on 200 attempts. Nine passes tonight. And here is the first big game of the night on the ground for Bobby Doyle as, again, they put him in motion and he went up that far side sideline. Prior to that carry, Ryan, Doyle had 10 carries for 13 yards. Eight rushes for two yards or less for Bobby Doyle. And that time, he rumbles into Brookhaven territory for a Shoreman first down. I told you before, uh, you know, Bobby Doyle was an, had an opportunity to just keep running at him. Keep running the ball and, and, and keep throwing the ball to him. Get the ball in his hands because he's too good of a player to give up on him so early. So the nice gain by Doyle and a first down for Avon Lake. Now we'll put him back in the eye, and he works into the middle. And has dropped across the 45-yard line. Well, we talked about some of the skill people that Avon Lake lost off that team last year. We mentioned quarterback Tyler Moore, tailback John Schroeder, wide receiver Matt Costello, who scored the only touchdown in last year's state championship win over Trenton Edgewood. Remember that game with the hook and ladder play that failed for Edgewood? And Avon Lake capitalized on a snowy field last year right here at this very surface here at Tiger Stadium here in Maslin, and that was all the points that Avon Lake could get along with the field goal, and they won it 10-7. 29 Letterman gone off of that team, 29 seniors. Fumble, ball loose in the field now. And Avon Lake lost it. Brookhaven says it's theirs. And it is, Brookhaven football. 
Daniels going out of that pile with an Alex Daniels. Surprise, surprise. You see an Alex Daniels all over the field today, and he comes up with a big turnover. Avon Lake just continues to kind of shoot themselves in the foot as you watch the exchange here. Just a bad exchange. Comes pumping, popping out right from the beginning, and look at that. You see all blue jerseys pouncing on that football. Well, the term blood in the water has been used as far as Brookhaven's mindset when there's a fumble, a mistake, something of like that, and they capitalize on it. They just swarm to the football. And there were all kinds of guys wearing blue chasing out these picks in. Here's McGee back to throw. Trying to capitalize right away in the turnover. The pass is almost intercepted. Tipped incomplete as McGee was looking for Ryan Wallace, middle of field in Avon Lake territory. And coverage back there that time, Trey Strauss was one of the shoremen back deep that time. Watch McGee. Tries to get it up to Ryan Wallace who try Oh! Ooh, it Means. hits off Means' yeah. shoulder pad. Andrew uh, Means had a chance to be a hero. I'd like to have that one back, huh? Six interceptions on the season for Andrew Means leading the Avon Lake defense. And there you see him slap his hands knowing he let one get away there. So he's second and ten. There you see the score in time across the top of your screen. And you saw the stinginess of the Avon Lake defense at the bottom. McGee to throw near side, and the pass is caught by Wallace. Now he's going to try and turn it upfield. And Avon Lake will have that. Andrew Means, who almost had the interception a moment ago, makes the nice open field tackle on Ryan Wallace. Andrew Means is a good football player. He's made a good couple of good tackles so far today. He's always in the right place as a defensive back. Yeah, he didn't come up with that interception, but watch this. This is textbook open field tackle. Break down, bring your feet, bring your arms, wrap them up, and get him to the ground. That's exactly what he did. Play loses a yard back to the 41, so a third and 11 for Brookhaven. Haven't been very many third down opportunities in this game for Brookhaven. Two backs, Holmes and Jackson, and this is Rodney Holmes with a gap to the far side. Oh, a great block, and Holmes first into Avon Lake territory. Oh, mercy sakes, that Dominic Jones cutting back, just level the Shoreman defender, and allowed Rodney Holmes to sprint for more yardage and a first down. Did I just hear mercy sakes? <laughs> that was pretty impressive. That, watch, watch number two come into your screen here. It's a great call, really. Rodney Holmes with the draw play number three. Bam. That's Chris Rao. Wow. Chris Rao getting teed off there. You know what? That, you know when you're a defensive back like that, you refer to those as, or, or your defensive back, you refer to this, this as an ear hole shot because he kind of hit you where you didn't even see it. It was in your ear hole. They always tell kickers to make sure they have their head on a swivel. That was a tough situation for a while. That was a great block by Jones, but this time the Avon Lake defense comes up. Sean Morello into the game. On the defensive side of the ball, comes up and makes the hit on Antoine Roberts. Big for Morello. That, that was a big play by Morello, especially after giving up that huge play on the draw. Watch Morello get in the backfield. Again, though, it's tough. The, the, the Brookhaven Bearcats aren't easy to bring down. Anytime you bring them down, in my opinion, it's a good tackle. Loss of three on that stop by Morello. He's in one of the linebacker spots. Dan Spring approaching the line of scrimmage. They're going to blitz. McGee rolling the throw now, being chased by Zawadnik and fires and has Melvin Jackson, the fullback, to the 35, just plows over a man and keeps going for a couple of extra yards, close to another Brookhaven first down. Kyle Stokes, the strong safety, was on the receiving end of Melvin Jackson's shoulder that time. And it is close to a first down. Morello came over to make the stop. Watch this. They have so many weapons, the Bearcats do. Melvin Jackson. Looks like a little bowling ball here. Puts his shoulder down, does his best Earl Campbell, and picks up another three yards. Bringing out the Earl Campbell reference. Now, that's impressive. Former NFL great running back of the Houston Oilers. Officials bring the chains across, and they will measure a Brookhaven first down. Six and nine now for... Bearcat quarterback Mike McGee, 53 yards and a touchdown. His numbers to this point of the game. A portion of the crowd on hand here this evening for this Division II state championship game. Columbus, Brookhaven, and Avon Lake. The Avon Lake side is almost completely full as Tom Blake and his Brookhaven Bearcats up 21-7 in the first and 10 at the Shoreman 32. One of 
and wide to the near side. Bottom of your screen. In fact, two now. Dominic Jones and Wallace. And here's a pass to the far side. What a catch by Roberts on the fingertips to the 25. Still on to go to the 20 and just running through tackle attempts, dragging guys with him. And another Brookhaven first down inside the 15-yard line to the 13. Antoine Roberts couldn't have been more wide open on this particular play. It looked as if Avon Lake wasn't expecting anything like this because out in the flats, there's a miscommunication. Look at Marty. No one. Nobody clearly covering Antoine Roberts out of the backfield. And that's why the Brookhaven Bearcats now have got themselves first and 10 at the 13-yard line going in with just over four minutes to play. Up 21-7. to seven. Again, trying to make good on an Avon Lake mistake. Alex Daniels recovered the fumble to start this drive. Roberts, the lone setback, and he gets the toss to the near side. And pass to the blockers. Antoine Roberts. Dominic Jones trying to clear a hole for him. And Roberts will get eight Out yards to the five. Avon Lake doing what they can to try to stretch things out. Even when you string them out, it seems like the, the cats are just running downhill. See him's running down in, into your living room there. Andrew Means has got about 10 tackles already today because they keep getting, seems like these backs keep getting into the secondary. Number 13 has to bring them down. Sometimes it's not all bad when you have a defensive back who's one of your leading tackles, but I think you hit on it with, with your statement, Ryan. Second Five down, and six yards down the field before somebody's putting a helmet on. You can't have that. No, definitely not in a state championship game. Eighth play of this drive upcoming. Second and goal at the five. This is Melvin Jackson. And Melvin Jackson. He gets a first here. down. I said it was second and goal. It was second and two at the five. But now it's first and goal after Melvin Jackson carries to the one yard line. From a mindset standpoint, Ryan, how big is a touchdown here for Burkett? Touchdown here would be enormous going to the locker room. I don't think. Even as, as confident as Brookhaven is, I'm not sure they believe that they can put hang 28 points on the defending state champions who have won 29 games in a row, okay, yeah. to put into perspective. You know, I, I, I tend to think differently, though. From talking with some of the Brookhaven people before the game, I don't think anything they do surprise them. Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, I don't yeah. think anything they do surprise them. You could be so. Them. Well, I know this much. Avon Lake, never in their wildest dreams, well, believed. Five yards. Still first. Believe they'd be heading into the, the locker room down with, with down 21. If, if they don't come down and score, and if and if Brookhaven does go ahead and score here, we're, we're saying a lot of ifs here, but 28 points would be, that would be tough to overcome. That was the eighth penalty of the first half against Brookhaven for 51 yards. Left tackle David Mann jumped prior to the snap. And now they come to first and goal from the six. Melvin Jackson, the lone setback. McGee to throw on a line into the end zone, attempting to hit Massey. And it's incomplete. Scott Bennett supplying the pressure here. As McGee goes to back to pass, watch. Oh, he just gets teed off. And again, who's there for the defense? Looks like Andrew Means. Had a big game from that corner spot, the senior. So on second and goal at the six. Brookhaven puts Alex Daniels back into the game, along with LeVon Moorefield and Melvin Jackson. So they're going to go power this time. Jeff Cumberland, 6'6", 210-pound junior, is a tight end to the near side. And McGee will look to throw. Wants to go back to Daniels now. He'll be forced to look again and throw and, and incomplete. As he tried to go back to the near side, and Anthony Harris, who's already caught a touchdown pass, was the intended receiver that time. And the pass ball is incomplete. That brings up a third down a third down and goal from the six. It was interesting. They powered the backfield that time, and then they throw it. Yeah, they powered the backfield and sent about five guys into the end zone. <laughs> if, if you had the wide shot from up where we're sitting, you had about five different blue jerseys in the end zone. Unfortunately for the Bearcats, hey, the Shoremen were playing great defense. Not only were their defensive linemen getting some great pressure, but the defensive backs had everyone covered, so McGee had nowhere to go with it. Third and goal at the six. Work game is one of four on third downs tonight. Melvin Jackson, Antoine Roberts in the backfield, they'll toss it to Roberts with Jackson leading the way, trying to turn the corner, loses his balance, and will not get into the end zone. So Avon Lake, their defense, bowling its back here and coming up with a stop. They were helped out a little bit by Roberts losing his balance. And now it's a fourth and means. Looks like they're going to send out Philip Kamara, the junior. 
that means one thing. It's, it looks like it's going to, they're going to go for three points as you see Robert slipping there. Kind of lost his footing as takes the toss. You know what? Even if he doesn't lose his footing here, Avon Lake did a great job of bowling up. This is a, a huge play. Now if they could somehow do something to make uh, maybe Kamara miss this, uh, this field goal, although anytime you see a timeout, that might mean you're going for it. Yeah, there was a rather animated conversation going on around Tom Blake, the Brookhaven head coach, on the near side. Some of the offensive players were, I think, trying to convince their coach that with their defense, why not go for it with a fourth and goal at the three-yard line? And it looks like some of the skilled people are putting their helmets back on as they meet on the sideline. There you saw Dave Belugas looking on and hoping his defense can come up with a stop as we told you three games today here at the state championships on ONN. Three more games coming up for you tomorrow. The St. Mary's Memorial Cleveland Benedictine game gets things started at 11 o'clock. That will be the 45th game in the last three years for Cleveland Benedictine. Two names well known to Ohio High School Football Championship tournaments. St. Henry and Amanda Clear Creek will play for that other championship and then the one that uh, a lot of people are looking forward to tomorrow night, Cincinnati Coleraine, Ooh. Canton McKinley. Now Coleraine's got a pretty good team with some speed, don't they? That's <laughs> the, a big understatement. <laughs> <laughs> Where David will play on fourth and goal at the Avon Lake three yard line. Dominic Jones starts in motion. They will eye the backfield now. Jackson and Roberts. Fourth and goal. McGee will hand off inside Melvin Jackson. Gets close and did not get in. He did not. No, he did get in. Now the signal comes in. Touchdown. Boy, what, for a what a great like they were going to give it to him. Well, yeah, he scored it right in there. Watch this replay. This is all hard. We talked about it before. I, it doesn't get any better than this. Melvin Jackson, the bowling ball, watch as he lowers the shoulder and keeps the feet moving, squirts into the end zone. And just like that, the gutsy call on fourth and goal from the three. Puts the Bearcats up 27-7. to seven. Boy, Dan Spring was the linebacker who tried to stand up Melvin Jackson and lost that duel, and Jackson gets in for the score. It's now 27-7, to seven. Columbus Brookhaven. They're so quick off the ball. Extra point attempt by Kamara is up, and it is good. 28-7 to seven is now the Columbus Brookhaven advantage over Avon Lake, a team which coming into this game in four prior playoff games had allowed 30 points. Truly really amazing what this what this team has done during the course of this season. Just you hit the nail on the head. Just continue to shock everyone except for themselves. They're just going to go out and play football. Try to be exciting. Try to make some big time plays. Each and every one of these guys has got some talent and speed. You throw it all together, and you get a team playing for the Division II state championship. Melvin Jackson's touchdown makes it 28 to seven. Lots of memories coming out of this weekend, and you get a chance to relive all the excitement of these championship games by logging on to OhioNewsNow.com. For more information on how to score your copy on DVDs of these championship games, this weekend makes a great Christmas gift for the holiday season. DVD copies of the state championship games available by logging on to ohionewsnow.com. 11 play scoring drive for Orkin. 4 minutes 26 seconds. Melvin Jackson with the touchdown. Here you see Melvin on the Brookhaven bench. Bearcats up by 21 points. This is doing the Brookhaven kick and getting knocked down across the 20-yard line at the 23. Ryan, you're Dave DeLugas now with 2.10 left in the first half. You're down 21 points. What's your mindset here? Well, first of all, I'm thinking 2 minutes and 10 seconds. I've got to try to get something. I've got to try to get some kind of a score, something just to give some kind of positive momentum heading into the locker room. They've got three timeouts left. They've got an opportunity to move the, move the chains. Uh, you know, Brookhaven sitting back, feeling really good about themselves right now. And why wouldn't they? I mean, they look pretty impressive. So who knows what he's going to do. They'll hand it off, and this is Bobby Doyle. And with, with the way things are going right now, I, I, I would tend to think they might be a little more content to just try and maybe get a first down here and just get to the locker room and not give Brookhaven any more opportunities on turnovers or getting the ball back. Well, if you don't get some positive yardage here on the second down, I'm calling timeout if I'm Brookhaven because sure. now sure. I'm, I want the ball back. Brookhaven, we've seen them score. They can score in a hurry. So, you know, hey, and, and I'm not, I'm one of these kind of guys, this is state championship, I'm letting it hang out. I mean, it's 28-7. There's not a whole lot you can do when you're down three touchdowns. 
again. The Shoreman will eye the backfield, and here's a toss, and this is Doyle, and he has the first down and more, and breaks free, and Bobby Doyle's on the go. Can anyone from Brookhaven Haven catch him? No. Doyle's at the 20. He's at the 15, and he will go in from 74 yards out. Touchdown, Avon Lane. Great teams always answer, Marty. And we talked about Bobby Doyle. This kid is a winner, and he came to play tonight, and he knew that well, you keep giving me the ball, and I'm going to make something happen. He had just under two minutes to play. He's going to take this pitch. Watch this crease. The offensive line did a good job creating a crease, and then he makes two guys miss, and then it's a race, a foot race to the end zone that Bobby Doyle's going to win. When it's all said and done, he's got his team within a touchdown, or two touchdown, rather, of the Brookhaven Bearcats as they head into the locker room. This is this was a huge, I can't st wow. I can't tell you how big this play was. Pretty impressive right there. Bobby Doyle was a 4 5 40 guy, and he was the Southwest Conference 100 and 200 meter champion this past spring. A flag is down on the extra point try. Prior to the snap, false start. Try from the eight. We've talked a great deal about the speed of Brookhaven. Well, Avon Lake showed some speed right there. Doyle picked him up and laid him down in a heartbeat. That was huge. Yeah, Doyle coming in. That's the shot of confidence, the shot of adrenaline. You know, the defending state champs needed as they head into the halftime. Now, you know, he's still got a minute 22. The Brookhaven offense has an opportunity to come down and do something. It's, it's imperative for the Shoreman defense to bow up and stop this Brookhaven Bearcat offensive unit. John Lyons' extra point is up and good. They only need to keep in mind about how big that touchdown is. Brookhaven gets the ball to start the second half. Oh, yeah. He's rather won the toss, so points are big. Points are huge. Bobby Doyle, first, watch this again. He, and you got to, again, give a lot of credit. The guy's up front. You see him get through the crease, and then he's just, it's all Bobby Doyle. It makes a guy miss, and it's his God-given speed that he takes it to the end zone. Runs right to the corner. Boy, that's... That's a big time play. That's one of those kind of plays that every single one in the locker room at halftime is gonna, gonna believe that they can continue to, to do, get things done because look at the first 10 carries, it was only 13 yards. The last four carries, we're talking about 107 yards and a touchdown. So hey, like I told you earlier in the first quarter, you keep chipping at that rock in that running game, eventually it cracks open. Exactly what happened with Bobby Doyle in that last play. Well, Bobby Doyle has been held in check before and has burst free in their regional final win over Tiffin Columbia. Going into the fourth quarter, he carried the ball 20 times for 68 yards and finished with 166 yards. So a pretty big fourth period and a huge play there for Avon Lake. Roberts is one of the deep backs for Brookhaven. Also back is Rodney Holmes. And this kick will be fielded by one of the up backs. This is Dominic Jones. And Jones out across the 30-yard line and dropped shy of the 35. So with 1-14 remaining in the first half. Brookhaven's offense will come back onto the field. The lead at 28-14 for the unbeaten champions from the Columbus City League, the Brookhaven Bearcats, the first ever Columbus public school team to advance to a championship game in football. Tom Blake talked earlier in the week about, yeah, it's great that we're the first City League team to get here, and it's been great, all the congratulations we've received and all the, the great things that people have said about our team from around the City League, but that's over and done with now. Our focus is on Avon Lake. Yeah, being the first City team here is great, but we have to beat Avon Lake or the, the trip isn't working. This is Roberts trying to get to the football. near side, and Andrew Means able to ride him out of bounds to the near side, stopping the clock with a buck seven in the first, period, uh, first half. Rather. Yeah, you see Coach Blake there doing a great job at the school. He's only been there a couple of years, so to get the... Uh, to have the city league represent, I know he doesn't want to carry that burden as he carries the the to he doesn't want to carry the torch or anything coming in here. But I know that if if Brookhaven were to win this game, boy, it would be a confidence boost, and a lot of the people in the city league would be pro definitely proud of what Tom Blake has been able to accomplish in just the second season of Brookhaven. Because that's a league that, rightly or wrongly, has taken its share of criticism over the years for its teams not performing well postseason wise and getting out of the playoffs as Antoine Roberts is knocked down. That's one of the things that Dominic Dominic Jones was talking about earlier in the week about Columbus City League teams getting this far. The, the, the talk has always been that, well, they're undisciplined, that they can't play in big games and things along those lines, and Brookhaven's dispelling that rumor. Oh, definitely. Well, I don't know. They've, they've had a lot of penalties so far. So I, about I don't think they're undisciplined by any stretch of the imagination, though. Third down at six from their own 37. And they hand it off, and this is Melvin Jackson. 
One down shy of the first down, and Dave Lugas is going to call another Ooh, timeout. Damn, you never sure. know. Hey, if he punches another one in here, you're going to talk about him being a magician. Two touchdowns in the last two minutes, that'd be amazing. Lee Simmons on the stop, a 6'1", 212-pound senior. So a fourth down upcoming, and Coach DeLugas' team will get the ball back, and they have a timeout remaining. So do they have enough time, though, to make something happen? As Bobby Doyle showed us a moment ago, well, the answer to that question would be yes. Want to know what's happening around the state of Ohio? Well, then count on the network that's plugged into all the major cities in Ohio. Of course, that's the Ohio News Network. Cleveland, Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus, Youngstown. Hey, how about Springfield? Count on ON. n ON n is Ohio News Now. A little plug in there, huh? <laughs> Just trying to build viewership and help everyone out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, this will be something here. This is uh, We've seen a bad punt so far from Brookhaven today. And... Uh, you know, Avon Lake, looking back at that bad punt that Brookhaven had in the first quarter or earlier in this football game, Avon Lake never capitalized on it, if you remember, Marty. So. Jones' last kick just went 13 yards. The snap bounces back to him, the punt is blocked. The punt was blocked. And it's a very short kick that will be down at the 49-yard line. It looked like someone got a hand on that on rushing for Avon Lake. So right around the midfield stripe with 17 seconds left is where the Shoreman will... Get possession of the football. That punt ends up going just 11 yards. Get a look at it here. Did someone get a hand on this? I'm not sure if somebody got a hand on it or it looked like Dominic Jones just yeah, kind of steered it that way to, to try to make it avoid the block. Yeah, I think Lee Simmons was there, and maybe the punt hit Simmons inadvertently. I don't know that he blocked it, but maybe got a hip on it. Looks like he might have got it with his right hip as he was running in. So first and 10 at the midfield stride for Avon Lake, and their fans up and making noise. And Tiff will go back to throw. Sets up the screen, floats it near side. This is Simmons, and he wants to throw. Looking downfield now for me. And the pass is battered away. And a flag comes in. Dominic Jones comes racing over and punched the ball away, but bumped Andrew Means in the process. Probably got there a little too early. This is a great call by the Shoreman. It's the double pass, and Andrew Means, you know, he's been around the football all day long, so why would we be surprised that he's going to be a part of this big-time play before the end of the half? And with nine seconds left in the half, Avon Lake will call a timeout. Watch the play here. Dominic Jones is going to come into your screen. See him? It's a great call because it was 1-2. Defensive pass interference, 15 yards, automatic, first down. Timeout, Avon Lake. Ninth penalty, Ryan, against Columbus Brookhaven. Happened so fast, Marty, that it really was a good call. It, Dominic Jones comes and hits him, and then... Um, means got his hands on the football, but you're still at the 35-yard line with nine seconds left. You're going to need something. You've got one timeout left for Avon Lake. So the Shoreman, I know they've just pulled a trick out of their bag. I, don't, I wonder if they have one more because at 35 yards, you're going to have to do something uh, in nine seconds. I don't know how many plays you think they have left here, Marty. Is that enough well, time for two? Seconds, I mean, yeah. depends on. You'd have to throw it, yeah. you know, in the end zone or something. You know, the, the last couple of plays here, the block punt. It's the little things there, Ryan, that end up winning games for you. And Avon Lake's been able to do it the last two plays. Yeah, this last one, the block punt, which is going to set up an opportunity now with less than a minute to play for Avon Lake to come down. And here's just a double pass. Tiff will get it over to Lee Simmons, and Simmons fires it down the field to Andrew Means. Dominic Jones makes the in interference. First and ten, and here is Tiff to throw. He goes down in the backfield. Melvin Jackson just came barreling up the middle that time. The middle linebacker and dropped the quarterback with three seconds left right back at the 49-yard line. What a play by Jackson. I almost get the feeling Melvin Jackson was like, okay, enough of this. I want to get to, let's get to the locker room, guys, and, and regroup because things have been going downhill ever since I got in the end zone, man. <laughs> so here he is. We see number 32 on your screen. You're going to see him flash across your screen, actually, and bring Tiff down. Tiff didn't have any chance to, to do much of anything. Jackson was in the backfield that fast. Well, he ran right past Scott Bennett, the left or the uh, uh, the uh, left guard rather for Avon Lake, and just shot straight up the middle and throws Tiff down back at the 48-yard line. The play will now bring up a second and 23 now for Avon Lake with three seconds left in the half, and the Shoreman burned their final time out of this first half. So again, it's all into the mindset of Dave Deluguez and what he would attempt to do here. Maybe you take one shot and just throw it down the field. 
You got or an you opportunity to take a to snap that. and just get to the locker room. Yeah, you can take a snap, get to the locker room. You can do a silly draw play or a something, some kind of a you know screen, or or you could throw it downfield. Anything. Why not just try a play? Because of the fact that hey, the last time that Bobby Doyle got his hands on the football, he went for the distance. They'll put Tift in the shotgun. Said Doyle in motion. And Tiff, trying to buy some extra time to throw, will fire on a screen. It's caught by Means, and he has some running here. Means to the 40-yard line of Brookhaven, to the 35, and will be hemmed in and thrown down at the 30-yard line. Not a bad play call right there, but again, it was just speed on speed that time, and Brookhaven speed won that battle. Great job by the Brookhaven defense, keeping the Shoreman in front of them. It was definitely a good play call, but the Brookhaven defense was set and ready for it. Now they'll head into the locker room. We've got ourselves a ball game. You don't mind giving up that underneath stuff in a situation like that. Absolutely. It is 28-14, the lead for Brookhaven over Avon Lake. And in a moment, we will check, hopefully, with Erica Robbins and see if she can get some words with Dave DeLuga, the head coach of Avon Lake, as we get ready to start the second half. And let's see if Erica has found Dave DeLuga. Coach, your team's down by 14 at the half. What kind of adjustments did you make in the locker room? Well, one adjustment is we can't be giving them field position with turnovers. Uh, boy, well, you know, things start to rolling downhill. You turn over that opening kickoff for a touchdown, and uh, that's pretty tough to overcome against a quality opponent. But we're hanging in there tough. Hopefully the second half's going to turn our way. Especially if it was like the end of the half ended for you. Uh, yeah, we were happy with what happened at the end of the half. Hopefully we can build off that. Okay, good luck in the second half. Thank you. Let's send it back up to Marty and Ryan. So Dave DeLugas, turnovers, big part of that first half and the mistakes, you take those out of the mix. And this game, who knows, we're looking at 14-14, could be 7-7. Those played a big role. Brookhaven capitalized on some Avon Lake mistakes and cashed them in for scores. The numbers will back some of that up if you look at the offensive production of these teams in the first half. Brookhaven, of course, getting the first points of the game on that fumble. The numbers, for the most part, are relatively even, right? Well, the tail of the tape there. The turnovers were huge because Avon Lake came into the game and they knew they couldn't turn the ball over, especially on the opening kickoff that resulted in the touchdown uh, for the Bearcats. You know, you look at what the Bearcats have done on the ground and through the air. Pretty balanced offensive ta attack. Those rushing yards are a little skewed for Avon Lake. you got to remember, you had Bobby Doyle snap off a 74-yard touchdown run to really get the Shoreman back into this football game. So the points off turnovers category, very big in this Division II state championship game. Avon Lake and Columbus Brookhaven meeting the Shoreman with a 29-game winning streak. And the Brookhaven Bearcats at 14-0 and entering this title game. We talked a little bit earlier about Cleveland Benedictine playing their 45th game in the last three years coming up tomorrow as they play for a Division III state championship. The third straight year they will have played 15 games. And Avon Lake, it's second consecutive year of playing 15 games. And that was one of the goals that the Brookhaven players talked about back in preseason camp when they arrived for drills. 15 games is our goal this year, and they are playing for the state championship tonight. So we get ready to start the second half. Brookhaven, which deferred on the coin toss at the start of the game, will get the football to start the second half. You know, Brookhaven coming into this football game and you see their possessions there they kind of started off with the punt but then uh, they came right back with the touchdown and then they really got hot there with those two touchdowns in a row bottom line three times into the red zone three touchdowns by Brookhaven yeah I know they had to take one to fourth down that's when the fullback got into the end zone but regardless three for three when they got in the red zone Antoine Roberts and Rodney Holmes are the deep backs as the kick by Lyons is a pooch to the far side and is it caught? Penalty flag comes in and the save is out of bounds. So they tried to catch Brookhaven napping. Perhaps maybe Brookhaven was offside. The officials are sorting this one out. This is very big to start this second half. A little onside kick to try to get back into this game. You know what? If this comes up to be Avon Lake's ball, this could be the shot in the arm that the Shoremen need. Everyone anxiously awaiting Larry Bartlett's cruise decision as you watch Lions come up. I don't know so much it was an onside as they tried to pooch it to the near side, and Strauss, who caught it, was out of bounds when he caught it. That's perhaps factoring into this, but with Brookhaven offside, we're still awaiting it. As you can see, Tom Blake looking on Dave DeLugas waiting. 
And still nothing has been settled yet. Larry Bartlett explaining things to Brookhaven. Well, clearly after looking at that replay, regardless of what happens, it shouldn't be Avon Lake's ball, given the fact that Strauss was out of bounds. He's out of bounds. So we can oh. rule that right out of the question right now. Offside or not. Right. So here's Larry Bartlett to explain to everyone. We have the illegal procedure on the kicking team. Brookhaven will take over when the ball went out of bounds. So illegal procedure when the ball went out of bounds on the kick. So Brookhaven gets it. First down and 10 at their own 44-yard line. So now we're ready to scrimmage. The 44 is where things will get started. First half kind of started off crazy. And just the second <laughs> half kind of started off the same kind of thing. A little, little excitement, a little enthusiasm in this Division II state championship game. Mike McGee, 7 of 12 first half, 72 yards passing and a touchdown. And they hand it off. And looking to throw now is Jeff Cumberland, in the tight end. Looking round for a receiver and has Ryan Wallace inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. It's a first and goal right away. Jeff Cumberland, the big tight end with the pass completion. Ryan Wallace and Jeff Cumberland. You're talking about a couple of juniors here, and this is just pure athleticism by both these individuals. Mike McGee gets the handoff, the fake dive, the, the reverse to Cumberland who stops, and look at that. That's not textbook quarterback there. He's a wide receiver for, for that reason, but he got it out there, he threw it up, he let Ryan Wallace run underneath and make the catch. Wow, and that's what happens, Marty, when you have speed, you can have the ability to just throw it out there and where you, where, you, where you know only your man can get the football, and that's exactly what happened. Cumberland to Wallace, huge play to open up the second half for the Bearcats. First and goal to six. Daniels is the deep back in the eye. He rolls into the end zone for the second time tonight. Touchdown, Brookhaven. Man, they can score in a hurry, can't wow. they? Alex Daniels. Nothing fancy about that. They just turned and handed it to Daniels, and he just followed the gaping hole into the end zone. Touchdown, Columbus Brookhaven. Well, it's like we've seen this before, huh? Deja vu, the wide open hole, Daniels. Just rumbling. He knew he he was going to get there because of the fact that his offensive line, his vision, he just continued to drive his legs, keep his head down. Alex Daniels, by the way, first team all Ohio. He has yet to make his decision on where he'll play his collegiate ball. He's a big enough kid, Marty. I'd like to see him go down to Columbus and maybe play for the Buckeyes. Well, folks in Baton Rouge and Norman, Oklahoma are hoping the same thing. Those are the other two destinations as you watch Daniels. Plow into the end zone for the touchdown. 35-14 now, Brookhaven. Unbelievable job by that offensive line. I know when we talk about their speed, we talk about their charisma, their swagger, their enthusiasm. You know, sometimes good old-fashioned blocking gets gets thrown to the wayside, but that's exactly what we saw just there. Some good, hard-nosed, up-front, man-on-man football. Alex Daniels, first team All-Ohio, Division II, 80 tackles. Played his junior year of football at Columbus Marion Franklin and transferred to Brookhaven. So Camara getting the football adjusted on the team properly. Game gets set to kick it away. Andrew Means waiting in the middle. Back deep for the short number 13, Andrew Means. And this will be Means at the 8-yard line. It's to the 20 and slides down after a short return. And Avon Lake's offense now down 21 points will come back onto the field. The Ohio High School Athletic Association Football Championships are brought to you by Grange, your partner in protection. By the Ohio Education Association, great public schools for every child. And by Kevin Curtis, call the law offices of Kevin Curtis at 1 877 4 Kevin 4 for automobile accident injuries. Mike Tift and the Avon Lake Shoreman come to the line of scrimmage and they will hand it off. And this is Bobby Doyle again putting him in motion. And Doyle from the 20 yard line picks up a Avon Lake first down out to the 31, so a pickup of 11 for Bobby Doyle. Bobby Doyle's done it all season long. He had a big first half. He came away with that big 74-yard touchdown. He had 120 yards in the first half, and then, of course, he's going to get this first carry, tries to get to the outside, and picks up a first down for the Shoreman. If, if the Shoreman have a chance here, it's safe to say Bobby Doyle is going to have to really have a big half. And slot backs now, and that's 
Strauss in motion, and Strauss gets the football and slips and falls as he started to turn it up. Far side, lost his balance on the artificial surface and falls down. We touched on it at the opening of the broadcast today in the Division 6 game. We had some snowfall here this morning, and uh, that uh, kept that the field at that juncture. I don't know that it's damp completely, but there are some slippery spots, and it, again, it is artificial surface. Artificial surface, every once in a while, we like to refer to those as the turf monster jumps up and bites you, and that can happen. If you're not familiar with playing on this surface year-round, sometimes that, that particular instance can occur, and you might have jumped up and bit Strauss. And this brand of artificial surface, much different than the field turf, which is so popular now. Bobby Doyle hit as he started to turn it up. Big Preston King, and I mean big, six foot, 342 pound senior. A second team all Ohio Division II before there. The big double nickel right there making the stop. Preston King, you know, this this defensive line averages 251 pounds across the front, but a lot of it comes in the way of number 55 there. He kind of skews the he's what we like to refer to as an outlier. He, not the, <laughs> the rest of them don't look just like number 55. A third down on 11. Avon Lake, two of six on third downs in the first half. Average down to convert as it has been a third and eight. Here's Tip to throw and has a receiver. That's Strauss making the catch two yards ahead of the first down marker and gets thrown to the turf by Keith Massey, but it is an Avon Lake first down. You know, Mike Tiff and Trey Strauss, they really have a nice combination with one another. I know they've hooked up a number of times during the course of the season, over 55 receptions during the year for Strauss. And watch this, it's a nice little curl route. And he just sits down on it. That's just timing. You, you, you know those are the kind of plays that during the course of the year, you're just on the same page of your offensive uh, receivers if you're the quarterback, and you can, you can throw that in your sleep. For Strauss, that was his second catch for 34 yards total here in this. Half. And here's Doyle again from the 44-yard line. Doyle picks up a couple out to the 46. The leading wideouts for Avon Lake. Strauss and Means are both verbally committed to Big Ten schools. Strauss to Iowa and Means to Indiana. But you have to wonder maybe if Means might be rethinking things. What with Jerry Bernardo being let go as Indiana's head coach. Obviously, with the signing date now into February, you have some time to reassess things and figure out, maybe, well, maybe that may, may not be the place best suited for me football wise. It's happened from time to time, especially as of late. Means one half of a football player, so it'll be interesting to see some of these players that we've seen tonight when they do go ahead and, and go to a college and start to make a name for themselves at that next level. It'll be interesting to follow their careers because we have seen some serious speed that. At the next level, that's one thing you can't coach is speak. Second down and eight call, and Bobby Doyle picks up a couple to the 48. So now it's third down and six, and another third down situation for Avon Lake. Now three of seven on that evening's activities. They'll put Massey to the bottom of your screen, man coverage with Trey Strauss. As Tiff surveys things on a third down and six. Play fake, and he wants to throw now. Lost it ahead, the pass is caught and then dropped. Dominic Jones separated the receiver from the pass that time. That was a big hit by Dominic Jones as the intended receiver was Mike Urban, the player Erica talked about a short time ago, being back into the lineup tonight. Dominic Jones with a big hit for Brookhaven. You know, I've talked to some people who have been to these games, and they say, you know, Brookhaven, they look like headhunters out there in the defensive backfield sometimes because they're flying around and making plays. And that's, that's the perfect way to describe that last play. From the moment it was released out of Tiff's hands, you knew that Dominic Jones had sized him up and he was going to come in and make a big time hit. Strauss on to kick it away with Wallace and Dominic Jones back awaiting this wobbly kick that's fielded by Dominic Jones at the 20. Jones looking for running room, tries to dart through a hole. Flag comes flying in way behind the play. And Dominic Jones is dropped. And we will have a penalty coming up, which we will tell you about in a moment. 7.59 remains in the game, or in the third quarter, I should say, the Division II state championship game. And it's Columbus Brookhaven with a 21-point lead over the defending state champions from Avon Lake. Brookhaven will start a little deeper on this possession after a penalty on the punt return. There you see the story to this juncture, 35-14, Columbus Brookhaven over Avon Lake as we have 7.59 remaining in this third quarter. Brookhaven taking advantage of Avon Lake mistakes, cashing them in for points. Bobby Doyle has snapped off a big run for the Shoreman. 
And right now it's Brookhaven in charge of this game. You realize the Shoremen have given up more points so far today than they have the entire playoffs. And Antoine Roberts gets across the 20-yard line, out across the 25. Antoine Roberts. In fact, Ryan, the 35 points, the most they've given up in any game this season. Avon Lake, the most prior to this, was 31 in a 44-31 win in Week 9 over Westlake. Avon Lake making this state championship. There you see the points allowed. Having to knock off a very good Amherst Steel team twice. Final game of the regular season to win the Southwestern Conference Championship. Ending Amherst Steel, its only regular season loss, and then two weeks later beating them in the regional final. First and ten after the game by Roberts, and they will go to Roberts again, and Roberts is on the move again. Yeah, and another first down. I don't want to slam, I don't want to make that sound like a slam on Avon Lake's defense because I don't, I'm not sure they've seen anything quite like this, this speed that you've seen out of this Brookhaven team. It's really remarkable because they come at you in waves. Hear it again. Antoine Roberts just slicing up through the middle, carrying a tackler. Chris Rowell there on that particular play for another Bearcat first down. It's just, it's very impressive the team speed. We can't, I can't state it enough because not only is the defense flying around making plays, igniting this enthusiasm on the, on the sidelines, but then the offense comes in with so many weapons. First and 10 out to the 49. McGee will toss it to Roberts, shoots through a hole to the near side. Roberts thrown down right around the 45-yard line as free safety Chris Rao came over to grab Roberts and drop him. But there you see Roberts accelerate through the hole. The 5'10", 160-pound senior. Gets there in a hurry. Here's the pitch. Makes his move. Makes the decision. Switches the ball to the outside arm like you're taught to do. And, and there he is. Chris Rao chases him down. But Brookhaven in complete control of this game at this point. Just as you see the numbers there for Roberts, that's a that's a good day by any standard. Over the century mark for Roberts, 109 yards, including 29 on this drive alone. Second and five, throwing 45. And McGee wants to throw, and the pass is swatted away and almost intercepted by Zawatek. Steven Zawatek got up into the air that time, the 6'3", 240-pound defensive player of the year in the state of Ohio. But we haven't had a chance to really talk much about in this game tonight. Really hasn't had a chance to be much of a factor, but a nice play there. Great play. Look at that big hand getting up there and batting the ball down. You're right about one thing. We haven't had a chance to call him, and that's because of the seams that, that Brookhaven creates. It only takes a second to get past that first wave of defenders. Zwatek, he's a defensive lineman, so if you get that a hat on a hat, and next thing you know, Antoine Roberts is is two yards past him. You're, you're not going to catch him. Zwatek's going the other way. Team high 13 sacks for Zwatek. Third down and five, Brookhaven one of six, and movement, Jeff Cumberland, the tight end. Moved across the offensive line, so that'll push him back five and bring up a third down and ten. It almost seems like the, the penalties are the only thing that's really slowing down this Bearcat offense. Prior to the snap, all start, offense, five yards, third down. The Associated Press here at Ohio selects the all-Ohio teams, and... The offensive and defensive players of the year from the same team. Avon Lake, Bobby Doyle on offense, and Zlatek on defense. And there you see the other first team selections. The duo from Brookhaven, Alex Daniels and Dominic Jones. Wallace in motion, toss to Holmes, who drops it and then does the smart thing and covers it in the backfield. It'll end up being a loss of about seven yards, but there is... It's fourth down now upcoming. Yeah, you know, that, that's a smart play. Just pouncing on the ball. You know, they were in a tough situation, a third down and long because of the fact that that was their fourth false start of the game, as you watch here. As Rodney Holmes just jumps on the ball, they'll have to punt it away. If you remember before, the Shoremen have gotten some pressure on the punter. So I know Dominic Jones is aware of that. The Avon Lake, this would be huge to somehow get some, some crazy thing happening on special teams. And they are coming for the kick, and just 24 yards per kick is Jones' is average, and the roll will help it somewhat inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. And that kick goes 23 yards, so it didn't help him as much as we thought, perhaps, that it would. So take a yard off of the average for Dominic Jones. The Ohio High School Athletic Association Football Championships are brought to you by the Ohio Association of Public School Employees. By Stan, Ohio's anti-tobacco movement created for you, by you. By Ohio parents for drug-free youth. Don't be a party to teenage drinking. 
parents who host, they lose the most. And by Donato's Pizza, edge to edge with great tasting toppings. Donato's respect the pizza. First and 10 for Avon Lake at their own 44-yard line, and Mike Tift is back to throw now. Looking long over the middle now for Means. The pass is incomplete. Double coverage back there. Dominic Jones and Keith Masson for Columbus Burkhead. You see Trey Strauss is cramping up a little bit. He was trying to get that ball to. Yeah, that double coverage makes it tough. I know that Mike Tiff, his favorite target is number 17 right there, Trey Strauss. But hey, sometimes when you, when you got double coverage and you got such speed, uh, like the defensive backs for Brookhaven, uh, he might he might try to look look his first his primary receiver off now and again. Then, but then again, when you're down three touchdowns, you got to make something happen in a hurry. One of the remarkable numbers surrounding Mike Tiff this season and the success that he had throwing the football, he was not sacked during the regular season. Completed 57% of his throws. They'll toss it to the near side and oh, oh. Dominic Jones races up and goes shoulder pad to shoulder pad with Bobby Doyle and drops him the line of scrimmage was the 44-yard line and that play will lose back to the 40. Now here, here's the team speed we're talking about. Look at one, two, three, four. We saw four blue jerseys outside Bobby Doyle, who, by the way, is a very fast kid. Oh, absolutely. In the 4-4-4-5 neighborhood in the 40. Of his 19 attempts in the game tonight, that was the third time he's been dropped for a loss, and that probably hasn't happened all that often to Bobby Doyle this year. And then again, he hasn't gone up against guys like Dominic Jones. Dominic Jones is a player. Hey, I know I, I've read a lot of stuff about him. I haven't had a chance to see a whole game. He's the real deal. Number two is going to make some college coach very happy. Right now, it's, he's supposedly going to pit. Third down and four. Tiff wants to throw. Now looking long to the far side. And the pass incomplete as Bobby Doyle was the receiver. And back on coverage was the weak side linebacker, Alex Daniels. <laughs> that might be as impressive as anything I've seen all day as Daniels running with Doyle. Watch this. Here's Daniels, 6'4", 230 pounder, running step for step with Bobby Doyle. Who you, you just heard Marty talk about his 4'4", 4'5", speed. Wow. That's a linebacker doing that right there. That's, <laughs> that's rather impressive. Fourth and 14 now, and Avon Lake facing a fourth and long. We'll get set to kick it away. Massey and... Or I'm sorry, Wallace. Number two, Dante Jones is 84. And here is Ryan Wallace. Kick by Strauss, and he will kick it away from the return bed. And the Brookhaven Bearcats returners, Jones and Wallace, will just watch this one bound. It goes inside the 20. And that's where the offense will come onto the field. But first, a penalty flag is down. That one dropped at the 39-yard line. The punt ended up going inside the 20 to the 18. Penalty is against Brookhaven. It's changing the way parents get information about their kids during a school emergency. That's the Ohio School Alert System. If your school isn't signed up, log on to ohionewsnow.com for more information today on the Ohio School Alert System at ohionewsnow.com. So this penalty being sorted out. Larry Bartlett again, the focus of everyone's attention here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. We have a block in the back on the receiving team. That penalty is refused, first down. Thank you very much, Mr. Bartlett. So first down and 10 upcoming for Brookhaven, 4.58 to go here in the third quarter for Tom Blake's team, and they hold a 35-14 advantage over Avon Lake. Bearcats reaching the state semis last year, falling short, losing to eventual runner-up Trenton Edgewood. Semi-finalists in 1991 and 1992, and making their first trip to the state final here tonight. Marvin Jones has scored the game's first touchdown as the receiver to the bottom of the screen, and they will hand it off. And this is Melvin Jackson. Melvin Jackson, the ball carrier. From the 17-yard line, Jackson out to the 25, a pickup of eight. You know, Brookhaven in the first half, they averaged six yards on first down. I hate to say this, I think in the second half, they're averaging even more. It seems like on first down, especially that first down to start the second half, they may, that, that was going to skew everything. But it seems like their second down are so manageable because their first downs, um, they've just been giving it to the guys like Jackson who can just... 
plow through for seven, eight yards. Second down and two call. And two wides. And this is Roberts hit in the backfield as Dan Spring, one of the linebackers in that 50 front, comes up to make the stop. Spring, the 6'2", 216-pound junior. Good job getting in there and wrapping him up. Here's an opportunity for uh, a junior to get you know, put his mark on the program. Big, strong kid getting in there, playing a team like Brookhaven. Weather, as we told you, very cold here tonight. But some folks are obviously a little steamed about this one this evening. Either that or they're on fire. Brookhaven <laughs> is on fire right about now. I think now. so. Third down and four coming for the Bearcats. Lone setback is Roberts. McGee with the quick drop. And looks long over the middle now for Cumberland, the big tight end who can't catch up to the pass. Incomplete. Watek was right in McGee's face as he threw that football. Cumberland's a pretty good target to throw to. 6'6", 210-pound junior. Watch this. This is what we talked about before. McGee's going to throw it where only his player can get it. And certainly Cumberland was the only one in the stadium that was going to be able to catch that ball. And it just passed his fingertips. Feel of the game seems a little different here in this third quarter. Not as emotionally charged as that first half. And the game itself, I think the pace has slowed down a little bit as well, too. A timeout called by Brookhaven. Here. Certainly has. When, you, when you've got three touchdown lead, as Brookhaven does, you know, I, I'm not sure how much that plays into the psyche and the emotions, but uh, it seems like both sides, you look at the sideline right now for Avon Lake, you don't have that enthusiasm, that excitement. Brookhaven, they, they kind of, you got some guys sitting around thinking, oh, what could potentially be here coming up right now? Uh, anyway, you look at it, the Bearcats have to punt it away from close to their end zone. I still contend. Special teams, you could, are game changers. You know, the Shoremen, they've scored 42 points in 9 to 10 games during the regular season. So just because you got 14 right now, there's still three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. You got an entire fourth quarter. You make a big play right now on special teams. It's not, a, it's not a stretch to say you're back in this football game. Avon Lake looking to become just the third Division II state champion to repeat. The other returning state champions that are involved in the title games this weekend. For sales has already been beaten today, losing to Youngstown Cardinal Mooney. And Cleveland Benedictine gets its chance tomorrow in the Division III state championship game. So the three returning state champions, one has already been beaten, and another one is in a big-time hole here in the third quarter. Jones the punt and he will run a fake and we're known for this here's Jones breaking free to the 40 yard line he has a first down and more and carries into Avon Lake territory earlier this year in the playoffs he went 65 yards on a fake punt and that time carries for a first down as he gained 30 on that carry Ooh, when you got a spark plug like Dominic Jones you can do just about anything and that comes in the way of being backed up into your closed, closed end there and he's just going to tuck it down and go and Ryan, the, the timeout that Brookhaven called was due to the fact they only had 10 guys on the field prior to that punt. And when the 11th player came on to join his teammates, Curtis King, the first guy who greeted him as he got onto the field was Dominic Jones, as if to say, where were you? Why weren't you out here with us? What's going on? Get your head in the game. You gotta like that out of a senior. You gotta love it. You, you see him there, he's pumped up on the sideline. He knows it's not over. He wants to put an exclamation point on this thing. McGee back to throw and finds the tight end Cumberland at the 35 and he carries to the 33 and gets bumped out of bounds and it's another first down for the Columbus Brookhaven Bearcats. McGee stood in there too, stood in the pocket, got nailed, gets it out to Cumberland who's by the way a 6'6", 210 pound junior. He's a big target to hit. He's had over 20 receptions now if you can include today's game. Close to 400 yards receiving on the year. Half dozen touchdowns as well for Cumberland. One of many of the Brookhaven Bearcats who also excel on that basketball team, that great basketball program at Columbus Brookhaven, which has won a state championship in Division I and have made a couple of trips to the state finals within the last four years. They have a great player in Hank Cornley. Handoff goes to Antoine Roberts. And he is knocked down after a short game. The line of scrimmage of 32. That's one of the things... Looking at both these teams, they've had some great athletes. Of course, Mike DeAndrea, Ohio State standout, played his high school football at Avon Lake. You look at what Brookhaven has produced. Oh, Brookhaven, some outstanding talent. Brookhaven's like a road to the uh, pipe road to the uh, Ohio State University with guys like Marlon Kerner and Jason and Anthony Gwynn, the Gwynn brothers. You've had Terry Glenn, Maurice Hall, Maurice Hall. You, you've had you've had numerous guys from Brookhaven. Second and 10 from the 32, and McGee rolls to throw now. He's in trouble in the backfield and goes down. 
Chasing him and knocking him down was Scott Bennett, the left tackle, the six-foot senior. Able to make the play and drop McGee as we watch here. And give cover or credit to the defensive backs for Avon Lake as well on this play. Oh, you got it. Dan Spring was in there too, jumping all over the place. Zwatek got in there. You know, Scott Bennett doesn't come up with that. It was a couple other shoremen that were ready to tattoo McGee. So, you know, the shoremen, there's no quitting the shoremen. They're flying around. They're trying to make something happen now to get a little spark plug for that defense. Third and 18 with under two to go, third period. Antoine Roberts straight up the middle of the field, on the go, and picks up on the work Haven first down to the 20 yard line on third and 18. He gets 21 yards to the 20 and a first down Bearcats. Looks like one of, the, one of the Columbus Brookhaven players is injured on the play. Looks like one of the offensive linemen. Antoine Roberts with the big scamper on third down and a first down. We were talking a moment ago about some of the talent that has been produced by these two schools and you'll watch Antoine Roberts run right at you here and pick up the first down. Keep in mind the Columbus City League is also known for producing some pretty good talent on the football field. Guy by the name of Archie Griffin won a couple of Heisman trophies playing at Columbus Eastmore. <laughs> Not a bad player. Yeah. Not a bad player <laughs> coming out of that league. You know, it, there, there are a, a number of talented individuals playing in the Columbus City League and, and I know that the coach doesn't want to be uh, up, everyone talking about uh, he has the burden to represent flag the city bearer, flag will, bearer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but but the fact of the matter is, you know, I know guys that played at Columbus Brookhaven, and if 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 the Bearcats could win a state championship today, they not only would be proud, but there's a lot of alum from that city league that would really be excited to see Columbus inner city schools have a state championship and maybe have some of those other programs compete now at that same kind of a level. I know you know Brookhaven. You look at who, what they've played. They, they were in a ball game with Beechcroft this year. I know that's a huge, huge rivalry between these two teams. Now, I know it's sloppy conditions and everything, but regardless, that's their closest game of the year, and that's a City League school. 15-2 to two the final of that win over Beechcroft, and so often teams in the City League have fallen into the shadow. The injured player, by the way, was Charlie Ferris being helped off the field a moment ago. They've so often fallen into the shadow of the enormous Ohio Capital Conference, which surrounds the Columbus area with some 30 schools in that league. And, you have to know that everyone in the City League is rooting for Brookhaven tonight. And Antoine Roberts adding to his 129-yard total with a scamper from the 20-yard line to the 14, a gain of a half dozen. Now, you know what? He only he only got six yards there. They're averaging 13 and a half yards per play on first down in the second half. So eh, about seven yards shy of their average. Red zone efficiency, something Brookhaven has had. Well, they've done very well tonight. House four <laughs> for four grab you tonight. Four touchdowns. Four possessions inside the red zone for the Bearcats. Up 35-14. You're going to win a lot of games, Marty, if you score every time you get in the red zone. Jackson, the lone setback, and he gets the call. They needed to get to the Shoreman 10 for a first down, and Jackson gets close. Let's go to the sidelines again and hear from Erica Roberts. We have a report on the injured player for Brookhaven. That was Charlie Ferris that went down. Apparently he's fine. He just had some cramps. The trainer, Angie, is stretching him out on the bench now for the Brookhaven Bearcats. Back up to you, Marty and Ryan. All right, Erica, thank you very much. There you see Angie, the trainer, working on Charlie Ferris. Angie getting a little pub, getting a little <laughs> airtime tonight. <laughs> well, it's a team effort. It sure is. You're absolutely right. First and goal to 10, and McGee back to throw now. Looks to the near side for Cumberland. Can he catch up to it? Almost did. The pass ball is incomplete. I was just gonna. I was just gonna go home. If if, if I saw another athletic play that impressive, I was gonna just say, say forget it. I I, can't, I wouldn't. Wasn't gonna believe I was gonna see that many athletic plays. Uh, Cumberland like, trying to stretch out for that. Mike McGee. I can't. I can't get over Mike McGee. He puts the ball exactly where he has to so that you know hey if Cumberland's not making that grab no one's making the grab he probably could have he probably should have made that grab uh, I think that was pretty good looking throw, at that that's a great throw, that's yeah. a great camera uh, angle by the way 11th play of this drive the incompletion 73 yards the Bearcats have chewed out in this four minute 24 second possession with 34 seconds remaining they go out of the eye in this third quarter and they will toss it now. And this is Roberts to the five and no further. As he was brought down, Tony Smirk, the nose guard, in on the stop for Avon Lake. 
And the third period clock winds. The four fingers come up on the hands of a number of players on that Brookhaven sideline. They all understand what's ahead with 11 seconds to go in this third period. It's going to move towards the fourth quarter. And the Brookhaven Bearcats from Columbus are 12 minutes away from their, their goal. A first ever state championship. They lead the defending title holders. Avon Lake 35-14 heading to the fourth quarter. The Ohio High School Athletic Association Football Championships are brought to you by Marathon. Put the happy at holidays this year with the new Marathon gift card. By Advance Auto Parts, for the best parts, people, and price, we're ready in advance. By Play It Against Sports Stores of Ohio, where we buy, sell, and trade. Remember us for your holiday shopping. And by the Ohio Army National Guard, learn how you can make a difference. Call 1-800-GO-GUARD. Along with Ryan Miller, Eric Robbins, I'm Marty Bannister, fourth period. Getting underway here in the Division II State Championship game. Brookhaven with a third down and goal. The Avon Lake four up 35 to 14. And Antoine Roberts has just increased that margin for the touchdown. Again, second effort. Good point of attack. He had the hole to allow him maybe to get maybe two yards, Marty, but I think I think Roberts did the rest himself. That second effort, the will to want to get into the end zone to put your team up now by another score is just. These Brookhaven Bearcats, they will not be denied. It is their year. This is their time to win a state championship. 41 to 14 is now their advantage. As Camara on to try the extra point out of Mike McGee's hold. The snap is good. The hold is good. And the kick is good as well. So Antoine Roberts and his Brookhaven Bearcat teammates. I think can sense it a little bit now with 11.55 to go in the game with the kind of defense that they have not to take anything away from the explosiveness of the Avon Lake offense they're up by 28 points they have to like their chances oh no doubt about it they're oh, how about this drive here it started on their own 17 13 plays 83 yards the, the the key there just over five minutes capped off by that five yard touchdown run by Antoine Roberts and I think you're right Marty I think they can sense it they can smell it and what you know what you said early in the broadcast was the fact that, you know, when Brookhaven can smell blood in the water, they go after it. And I think this defense, they're not done playing some football. That's why it's so tough now for Avon Lake to come back because Brookhaven, when they're having fun, they're loosey-goosey, flying around, that makes this team very difficult to play against because they're just out there making plays, having some fun, trying to really make a highlight reel. Well, and really, Ryan, they've been that way. I think so they got off the bus today. And, 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 that, and it shows, you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they've scored, they've hung 42 on the defending state champions in Division II that has a 29-game winning streak. You don't do that without being a little confident. Team that was giving up just 10 points per game. Avon Lake, and here is Kamara getting set to kick it away. <laughs> Ran up as if he was going to kick it. Just decided to readjust the football. And we'll try it again. Means, Doyle, and Schmidt are the deep backs. And this will be Means, middle of the field. The 20 yard line trying to get to the outside. And is dropped shy of the 25 yard line. Coverage provided by Brandon Crowder for the. Columbus Brookhaven Bearcats. And Brayvon Lake looking up at that scoreboard has to be a bit disheartening knowing the type of success that they have had over the years. This remarkable run that this program has had. Look at that since the year 2000. 51 and 4. That is flat out obnoxious. That's amazing. It's unbelievable. So if we go 51 and 4, the kids, I mean, this is a feeling they are so unfamiliar with. 51 and 4. It's Last team that really gave them this kind of an evening was Macedonia Nordonia, the last loss that they had back in 2002. They fake a reverse as this is Doyle to the 30-yard line. I don't know that that's full work game at all because I don't think you're going to see Doyle give it to anybody else, even though Strauss was the fake on that. But they probably felt the same way I did that Doyle was going to keep the football. Yeah, well, Doyle keeping the football regardless. The speed for Brookhaven, you saw Alex Daniels that time come from the, the other linebacker position from the other side of the field, chase him down. And you know Doyle made the guy miss there. You know, he got up got up the field, made some positive yard, and shoot, he picked up eight yards. That's a pretty good carry. Out to the 31. They load up the backfield and will toss it to Doyle again, and he finds a gap, 35-yard line, 39-yard line, where he is knocked down. 
Dominic Jones was there watching as Sean Loney made the stop, the strong safety. Loney, a player who moved to that spot for wide receiver. Watch the offensive line with the surge. Bobby Doyle, what you didn't see there is you saw Alex Daniels kind of on some roller skates, kind of driven out of there. Play first down. And tipped again, will hand off to Doyle. And Doyle at the 40 yard line. Where he is dropped by Brandon Harris, strong side linebacker for Columbus Brookhaven. But with the lead where it's at right now for Brookhaven, we talked earlier about Tom Blake, Brookhaven's coach, saying earlier in the week, I really like our chances on teams that have to throw on us when we're up by a lot of points because of the talent we have in the defensive backfield. And Brookhaven's offense has also been doing a pretty good job of keeping Avon Lake's offense off the field. You see those possession time of numbers. I think your point's well taken, though, and I think that's probably why Avon Lake's sticking with their running game. I think so, yeah. yeah I mean, they just snapped off the big 74 yard, remember, um, just before the end of the half. And the, their their biggest success so far has been in the ground game. And, you know, they've, they've tried as hard as they could to throw the football. That secondary for the Brookhaven Bearcats is just so athletic, and they break on the ball so well that, you know, you start putting it up in the air at this point, and you just continue to get yourself in a hole. A third down and three call up coming for Avon Lake as we hit the nine and a half minute mark of this fourth quarter. Columbus Brookhaven scored in the game's first eight seconds. Their offense hadn't even took the field and they were on top seven to nothing when Andrew Means fumbled the opening kickoff and Marvin Jones scooped it up and scored. Tiff play fake, he wants to throw and has a receiver. And getting a first down is Sean Marillo. Marillo, you know, we talked about him before. He's played on both sides of the ball, and he's been a steady fullback for the Shoreman all year long. He's had nine touchdowns, gained over 400 yards, been a solid junior for this for this club. Six foot, 200 pounds, nice, big, strong, athletic football player. Good compliment to Bobby Doyle. Last year they had Sefiligoy at that fullback spot, leading the way for Schroeder. And here's a pass to the flat to the near side. And this is Marillo again with running room after the catch. And gets another first down for Avon Lake. Dan Sefiligoy was that fullback last year, leading the way for Schroeder. And now Marillo has become a factor in the last couple of plays here. How about Sean Marillo doing his best dance out there on the corner? Watch as he gets the ball from Tiff. And you watch Sean Loney, number 33. Oh, breaks the ankle. <laughs> a little move there. Now, I don't know if it was because of the move or because of the field. Any way you look at it, uh, Marillo is trying to do what he can to pick up some, some yardage. Gets out of bounds, stops the clock. He's down to 10 now at the Brookhaven 26 yard line. And here's Doyle. Running off of the defender, bounces off the pile to the far side of the 20. And gets to the. 15 yard line before he is bumped down. We just bounced off the pile that time. I think that was Preston King that he bounced off of. <laughs> it was. Well, Preston King, number 55, had his back to the play and he did bounce off and he, and he got to the outside as you watch here. You'll see 38 bounce into the back of number 55 who was pancaking someone, Marty. That's the reason why he had his back on the play. He was, he was trying to get rid of the blocker. Well, I think what was impressive about that, though, did you see Preston King? He still reached around and had a hand on Doyle for a moment. <laughs> That's a six foot, 342 pound senior trying to turn that play around. Doyle carried to the 13 yard line, and it's good enough for another first down for Avon Lake. Clock is stopped at 8:39 remaining in the game. Tiff quickly over to the sideline to check out the play call mindset. First time in this game that Avon Lake, averaging 39 points a game, has been inside the Brookhaven 20. Hard to believe, as far it? as the red zone opportunity is concerned. And they go quickly on the inside, and Urban, the ball carrier, that time. Mike Urban, a senior, looks like we're going to see some seniors now to get a chance to play a little bit. 29 seniors left that championship team last year for Avon Lake. And another solid group will leave after this game. Unless they're able to 
not a monumental comeback against one of the stingier defenses in the state. They will leave without their stated goal, back-to-back -back state championships. Tipped on the play fake, wants to throw, has a receiver, and making the catch is Morello again. That's become a favorite play on this drive. Five catches now for Morello. Looking good, out of that, yeah, looking good out of that backfield, number 39. Dominic Jones, we've called his name a few times tonight, huh? Watch as number two steps up, just keeps driving his feet. He is a very good football player, both those two. You've got two very good, Marillo and Jones. This field's full of football players tonight. Just seems like Brookhaven's had more big time plays that they've made in this football game. And have been more opportunistic tonight, capitalizing on mistakes. Third down and two at the five. And Tiff wants to throw now and finds a receiver touchdown. Trey Strauss makes the catch. And into the end zone for the score from five yards out. Nothing real fancy about that. Good ball, good route. Textbook drive, textbook slant. Seems like those two have practiced that one before. You know, we talk about timing routes with the receivers and quarterbacks. These two could do this in their sleep. Back to pass, little pump. Tiff, Strauss, six points on the board, Avon Lake. 6'4", senior Trey Strauss bound for Iowa with the touchdown reception. It's now 42-20. to Brookhaven and John Lyons on to try the extra point. Snap is good, the hold is good, the kick by Lyons splits the upright and is good. So 42-21 now is scored in favor of Brookhaven with 7-13 remaining in the game. And if you're Avon Lake right now, do you onside in this situation right now? I guess you have nothing to lose. and You, you know, you're down 23 scores. If you do and you get it, well, you got, you got an opportunity now to make it a two-score game. If you don't, what's, what's, the, what's the harm? I mean, yeah, why not? I mean, you tried it at the start of the second half, right? A little pooch. Yeah, it almost worked. Yeah, it almost worked. Saw that graphic a moment ago, the upperclassman on this year's Avon Lake team. Just a couple of juniors. Start on offense, Sean Morello at the fullback spot. And on the defensive side of the ball, Pete Storer starting at one of the end spots tonight. And Dan Spring at one of those linebacker spots. And Chris Rao and Kyle Stokes. So they will lose again a great deal of talent, will the Shoreman from Avon Lake. But when you have a program in place that's been able to produce the way they have, I think pretty much they're in that reload instead of rebuild mentality at Avon Lake. <laughs> without question. You don't go 50, what was that, 54? 51 and 4. 51 and 4. 51 and 4. You don't do that without having the systems in place. And they will kick it away. And Antoine Roberts at the 19-yard line. The ball scores free. It's loose to the field. Avon Lake has it at the 45-yard line. They come away with it. It's falling on that loose football for the Shoreman was John Lyons, the kicker. You know what, Marty? That's just as good as an onside kick. Yeah, it worked out. So with 7.06 left in the game, Hope stays alive on the Avon Lake side after the fumble by Roberts. Just stripped out of his hands. You know, and it looked like big old number 42 for the Shoreman came in there, Scott Nealon, and uh, made a big strip. John Lyons at the recovery. Well, we've talked about how Brookhaven can put points on the board in bunches. Avon Lake averaged 39 points a game this season. They'll toss it to Doyle, who hands back to Strauss, who looks like he wants to throw with the football now. Still rolling with it, he'll set and come back to the middle of the field. This is going to be tipped around and almost intercepted. Look for a second, Ryan, like Strauss wanted to come back to the near side. The receiver was double covered as they went downfield. Yeah, it was blanket coverage right there. It seemed as if the Brookhaven Bearcats were coached up that this is what was going to happen. All the trickery was going to come out. Strauss back to throw it, and there he is again, Andrew Dominic Means. Jones. Andrew Means was the, was the intended receiver. Dominic Jones, again, always around the football. Reminds me a lot of Mike Doss when he played the state championship game for Camp McKinley. You know, always, he's always around the ball. Second down and 10 call. Here is Doyle taking the handoff, and... Short running room for Doyle as he worked to the right side. So a third down upcoming now for Avon Lake. Five of 11 on third downs this evening are the Shoreman. Curtis King was in on the stop for Brookhaven. 
you know, you mentioned it before, you know, um, even if, if Avon Lake were to go ahead and score, this defense for the Bearcats are so tough, and here you are, you're, you're dead eye. I mean, this, this defense forces them into third long situations. Third down and eight after a fake. Tift wants to throw, and this one will be intercepted. Dominic Jones with the pick. He's ninth of the season, and Jones is racing back to the near side on the return. 35-40. Jones is knocked out of bounds. A big shot on Jones by left guard Scott Bennett. But Dominic Jones with the interception and the nice return and Brookhaven's defense again. That's what I call football. How about Bennett, huh? <laughs> Look at him on the sideline here. And I know they're trying to make a play, so they just overthrow the receiver. Dominic Jones, I said it before, always around the football. He gets it, gets upfield. we got to get some of those guys in the blue jersey to throw a block on number 72. Just <laughs> watch him here. Woo! That's You know what? This is the kind of weather, too, where you get a hit like that, the snot comes flying out of your nose. <laughs> 37 yards on the... Return by Dominic Jones, but Jones looks very unfazed by all the ooing and aahing about the hit. He's up and walking behind the Brookhaven sideline as if nothing happened. Hand off to Antoine Roberts. Finds a little bit of a gap and gets to Dave on Lake Territory. Pick up uh, a couple. Now a couple of flags come in behind the play as there was a little extracurricular activity going on behind the play. So the Brookhaven Bearcats with the football and six minutes to go in the Division II championship game, up by 21 points. We'll say this, we've seen a lot of exciting football for these three and a half quarters of play. A lot of it coming from those guys, the Cats. And in particular, number two, Dominic Jones, offsetting personal fouls. Personal foul. On the offense, personal foul. On the defense, dead ball. They will offset second down. That, again, was behind the play where some of that pushing and shoving was going on, so the offsetting personal fouls. Burkhaven opened the season with a win over Chillicothe, 34-7. Dominic Jones, one of the top returners for the Bearcats this year not give up more than 10 points in the game on just three occasions this year. Beating Walnut Ridge 36-12, Columbus Centennial 49-12, and then in their regional final win over Uniontown Lake 35-14, they've given up 21 here tonight. Antoine, and Roberts. Antoine Roberts gets to the 45-yard line, but still I think a very good performance by that Brookhaven defense tonight. As the clock continues to roll towards a championship for Brookhaven, Tom Blake who has coached at a number of stops, Ryan, in the Columbus area at Independence at Thomas Worthington. Made no bones about it, though. This is the best team he thinks he's had as a head football coach. Uh, there's no surprise. You look at what they've done to the defending state champions and some of the, some of the things that this team is responsible for and just the way that they've played uh, with their team speed, just the crazy defensive hits that we've seen today. They're amazing. Yeah, third and fourth. Ball pops loose again as... Roberts lost the handle. I'm checking that was Melvin Jackson who lost the grasp on the pigskin as he got through the hole, but Brookhaven recovered it. So now Jones will have to come on and kick the football away. Seemed like that football was laying down there, Marty, for an eternity, didn't it? <laughs> it, did, didn't it? Watch, okay, there's the football. It's already loose. Now what? It's to the left of your screen. Yeah, it did. It, it's, it's it was just hanging there. Nobody really realized. I think at that point, Antoine. I, I thought it was, wasn't it Antoine that right. Roberts that ended up? I think it was Mark Jackson, the center, okay. who ultimately fell on the ball. Well, yeah, it's, it's like Antoine yeah, Roberts had a shot at it. Just didn't even realize he was <laughs> Here's the kick by Jones, and bounced right to the return man for Avon Lake Schmidt, who really couldn't do anything but field that kick as it bounced right at him. 446 left in the Division II state championship game. Brookhaven by three scores, looking for their first ever football state championship. Let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Erica Robbins. Thanks a lot, Marty. Look who I found, Maurice Hall, senior tailback for the Ohio State Buckeyes, but you also used to wear the blue and gold for the Bearcats. You were a tailback here at Brookhaven. However, you and the many other fine players at Brookhaven never appeared in a state championship game. How's that make you feel? Oh, man, it feels great to see these guys out here. You know, they've been working hard all season. 
it feels great just to be a part of something like this. I see you giving high fives and giving some inspiration to the kids on the sidelines here. How often do you go back to Brookhaven and help out? I try to go back as much as I can. Really just help the guys on some knowledge that I have. You know, I'm just helping. I'm just happy I can help. Okay, well, we're glad you could help us out today. Good luck at the Alamo Bowl. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Maurice Hall, tailback for Ohio State and a former tailback here at Brookhaven. Back up to you, Marty and Ryan. All right, Erica, thank you. Mike Tift hooked up with Trey Strauss, but that play is coming back. Uh, an eligible receiver will be the call downfield against the Avon Lake Shoreman. Strauss made a nice catch. He got into Brookhaven territory, but it's all coming back. Yeah, Maurice Hall was one heck of a football player when he was at Brookhaven. I mean, he, he had a great career at Ohio State. He's got one more play uh, game left, but you know there wasn't a whole lot of people tackling him. He was wearing the <laughs> blue and gold for Brookhaven, the Bearcats. It seemed like each and every time that uh, he was on the highlights at, on Friday nights, man, you'd see. We have an ineligible downfield on the offense. Half the distance, repeat, first down. And that penalty just wiped out what would have been a 42-yard gain for Avon Lake. So the ball moves back to the five-yard line, and that's where Avon Lake will scrimmage with 4.36 left in the game. Avon Lake entered this title game winners of their last 29 straight high school football games. An impressive streak, win or lose here tonight. Here's Tiff throwing long over the middle and way incomplete. In these days of outstanding athletes at really just about every level, to win 29 games in a row is just uh, is a remarkable achievement. And as I mentioned, win or lose here tonight, boy, that's something they can take with them for a long, long time. Uh, Avon Lake, they've, they've got a great team. They've got a great program. The coach knows that. The players know that. It's, it's tough, you know. The, these games, the, the only the, the thing I don't like the, the, the most about the, this weekend is that some team has to leave with a, a, this feeling of they've lost something. When, in all honesty, everyone's gained something by being a part of this great thing we call high school football and the state championship atmosphere. Well, and I think it's a lot like Ryan in a lot of situations as a second and 15 up comes for Avon Lake. And they will toss it to... Doyle and he gets out across the 15. I think you can relate it in a lot of situations to almost like a, a college football team that gets to go to a bowl game. You get those extra practices, you get those extra weeks to work not only with your starters, but with a lot of these younger guys who get extra repetitions in practice. And for, at high school, you know what, Marty? You build relationships, you build memories. These, these kids, these seniors on Avon Lake and on Brookhaven, they will remember this day for the rest of their lives. They will call their buddies when they're in college or when they're at work or whatever, and they'll remember back when. If the Avon Lake Shoremen get a chance to come back 10 years from now, they'll be a part of the team that said, hey, I remember when I was in that game. So yeah, there's a lot of great memories, and these kids are gonna be proud of the fact that they were part of that 29 and 0 team that had a chance to defend their championship and ran into this buzzsaw like the Brookhaven Bearcats. Third down at seven, and Bobby Doyle trying to get to the first down marker. Got close, and got close enough, picked up the first down. So with 328 remaining in the game, and Avon Lake first down. I think the tone of this game was set in the first eight seconds on that fumbled kickoff return by Avon Lake and Brookhaven getting it and Marvin Jones running in for the end zone and as you see the last loss for Avon Lake that beat in the regional final to Macedonia Nordonia but losing that and having that play happen early like that an already confident Brookhaven team just really went up a notch or two and I think it caught certainly Avon Lake a little on its heels at that juncture. Here's an incompletion as Tiff is throwing long for Andrew Means on that far side side. But I think that's kind of where the tone of this game was set, right? I think you're right, and I think it provided that extra spark. There's no doubt about it, in my opinion. When they came out to play this football game, Brookhaven was ready to play and excited about playing it. And then to put the stamp of approval was that first kickoff. All of a sudden, it just changed the entire game. And don't, and don't get me wrong, Brookhaven is one heck of an athletic club. And maybe Avon Lake is looking across the sidelines at a team that they are unfamiliar with because they haven't seen this kind of speed all season long. I, I don't know. I, I've never seen these other teams that they've played. But the fact of the matter is, Brookhaven, from, from, the, from the opening kickoff, came out, fl was flying around, and wanted to win this state championship today. And you got to give credit to them for coming out and, and having the guts to look the state champion that has won 29 in a row in the face and say, we're going to be here for four quarters. We want to play some football today. Penalty flag on that last play. And 
Referee Larry Barton yeah, tells us. Participation on the offense. Half the distance, still first down. So they walk off. We'll push the football back to the 10-yard line. If you're looking to relive the excitement of these championship games, we well get a chance to do so by logging on to ohionewsnow.com for more information on how to score your copy on DVD this holiday season. You'll get a chance to do that by going to ohionewsnow.com. Bobby Doyle, the carry that time. And short running room for Doyle as the Kings were there, Preston and Curtis. Not related, but. No relation, mind you. I go, big factors for Brookhaven this season. I go back to Brookhaven. You, something you said earlier about the fact that uh, here's a school that's been impressive and won state championship before in uh, basketball. How good are these football players going to feel going to school now on Monday carrying their own championship banner around? Second down and 20 upcoming. And Tiff again is back to throw now and has some time to find Andrew Littlefield across the 25 yard line out to the 28. Andrew Means coming into the game with 36 receptions. And again, that's a guy that really on the offensive side of things has been relatively quiet tonight. Trace Ross has had some nice catches, touchdown reception in this game as well, too. But Again, Andrew Means really not much of a factor tonight. He's been all over the place on defense. We've, sure called, has. We, we, we've called his name a number of times, and, and I like him as a football player. I mean, he's he showed some guts and some courage, some great open field tackling today. Third and one, and Tift wants to throw and has a receiver. And there's Means almost on the 45 yard line, first down and more, and gets into Brookhaven territory at the 47, and a first down for the Avon Lake Shoreman. Much like the end of the first half, what Brookhaven is doing now, Marty, is they're going to let the Shoreman complete everything in front of them. You'd be as deep as the deepest and maybe even five yards deeper. Look at You had the defensive backs there for Brookhaven. That was Keith Massey, who was just sitting back playing catch. He's not going to let you outrun him. So if you're smart like the Shoreman are, they're going to run some curls, get their chunks of yardage, and let a guy like Andrew Means try to make somebody miss. Trying to get one more score on the board with 1.13 remaining in the game. And here's Tiff looking to throw for that score, looking long downfield and incomplete. As laying out for that pass for Avon Lake was Max Schmidt. Once again, the 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 As Tiff really aired this one out, trying to get it to Schmidt. Schmidt, watch Schmidt. Oh, just out of his reach. Sean Loney on the coverage there. One oh nine left. A second down and ten call up coming, and Columbus Brookhaven headed towards the Columbus City League's first ever football state championship. Snap rolled back to Tiff and the pass incomplete. You know what, I know we're up here in the press box, but Preston King's eyes got awfully big because <laughs> he sniffed out the screenplay and he, he almost could sense it as, here we go with the Gatorade shower. <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't even Tom Blake, the head coach. The, the good feelings all around. Number of longtime assistant coaches, all of them volunteer assistants on that Columbus Brookhaven sideline. Just one more part of that family like atmosphere they have at Brookhaven. Uh, we've had some great so far. Here it is Tift looking to throw and it's thrown down in the backfield as he started to turn it up and get rid of the football brought down by Anthony Harris. It's interesting to note that when we talk about Avon Lake with their program in place and the things that they do, Columbus Brookhaven, no freshman football squad because of the budget problems in the Columbus public schools and trying to field athletic teams. The freshmen all play JV football this year. So you look at what Brookhaven has done over the years, winning their first eight championship after numerous trips to the 
state playoffs, that makes that even more remarkable. Oh, you're absolutely right. You know, this has been a great day of high school football from the beginning. We started at 11 o'clock with Division 6. You had the smallest school, the 11th smallest school in the state winning the state championship. <laughs> now it looks like the first city league school from Columbus, Ohio, is going to win a state championship. It's uh, It's been a great, great first day of a great weekend of high school football. As the exclamation point, oh, somebody got away. I <laughs> wonder how many more jugs of Gatorade they got on the sideline for Brookhaven. That was fourth down, so on downs, the Shoremen give up the football. A number of assistants have already been doused with water. On a chilly night like this, if I'm Tom Blake, I'm hiding right now. With 13 oh, seconds you kidding left. me? <laughs> Get me away from them Gatorade <laughs> buckets. So the celebration is well underway now on that Brookhaven sideline. There you see Tom Blake getting hugs from assistant coaches, players. So a special, special moment for this Columbus Brookhaven Bearcat football program. And really for the Columbus City League as a whole, a state championship belongs to the City League and to Columbus Brookhaven. Down to an E, the championship formation. McGee to an E. And with 10 seconds left, the helmets come off. The celebration begins on the field. Columbus Brookhaven wins their first football state championship and dethroned the defending Division II state champions, Avon Lake, beating them tonight by the score of 42 to 21 here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Massillon. Impressive, impressive performance by Brookhaven. Awfully impressive. Team speed comes to mind. Guys flying around, swagger, and playing with a lot of intensity. I saw a lot of great football players out there today for the Brookhaven Bearcats. The thing is, I saw some great ones as well for Avon Lake. This is two very good football teams, but you mentioned it earlier, Marty. One team was opportunistic, and another team just couldn't come up with some big-time plays when they had to. The Grange Insurance most valuable player in this evening's game. We're going to give that award to Dominic Jones of Columbus Brookhaven on both sides of the field tonight. Returns. Look at those total yards in the game tonight for Dominic Jones. All purpose yards, including a big 30 yard fake punt, which kept the drive alive. That was huge. He had the Columbus big, Brookhaven. Big interception at the end of the game there as well. He had a huge block in the game. He was all over the field, making tackles, breaking up passes. Some of the stuff you won't see in the score sheet. But number two, Dominic Jones did a great job for Columbus Brookhaven tonight. And he is the Grange Insurance most valuable player. Grange is proud to make a $500 donation in the name of Dominic Jones to Columbus Brookhaven High School's General Scholarship Fund. The championship belongs to Columbus Brookhaven as they cap off a 15-0 season by beating Avon Lake 42-21 to win the state title. The handshake's going on now down around the midfield area as Columbus Brookhaven celebrates its first state championship with a 42-21 win over the Shoreman of Avon Lake. A crowd of just under 8,000 here tonight to watch this championship game. And Brookhaven started early, eight seconds into the game, getting onto the board when Marvin Jones was able to scoop and score on a fumbled kick returned by Andrew Means, 10 yards out. And just like that, it was 7 to nothing before the explosive Bearcat offense was even onto the field. They jumped up to a 14-0 advantage. A long touchdown pass got Avon Lake close after that. But, Ryan, you really never got the sense, I think, especially because of the way that the Brookhaven defense played in this game tonight, that they were going to let Avon Lake think they could get back into it. I would agree with you wholeheartedly. I know that Brookhaven could score in bunches. I knew that they could. I just didn't know they could do it against a team like Avon Lake. Avon Lake had such a great, phenomenal season. They had a two-year run where they were unbeaten, and they just ran into a better team tonight. I mean, sometimes that happens, and uh, this is always great to come out and watch some great high school football. I had some fun tonight. I, I don't think I've seen two teams with so much talent on a football field in Division Two in a long, long time. This has been some exciting football, and, and if you want to talk about, hey, how about you just missed... Uh, for, for the Columbus Brookhaven Bearcats, Alex Daniels just do a little backflip. <laughs> this is the athleticism. The guy runs, does a cartwheel, and a backflip. Here's a guy, 6'4", 230, senior, in his full gear. I mean, this, Pretty this, impressive. This has been very impressive. 
Uh, both teams are about to get some trophies here. But I tell you what, Marty, it's been great football in Mass, and I, sure and I know I'm looking forward to tomorrow's Division One game too. That yeah, should be a lot of fine football on Saturday. Our post game coverage continues. Let's head down now to Danny Franzak. Danny. All right, Marty. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we do continue three more games tomorrow. Joining me as always is JJ from JJ Huddle, and you know we've been talking about these two teams all year on Sportsnet on Friday and Saturday night. As a matter of fact, Avon Lake Brookhaven finished one and two in our own NJJHuddle.com power poll, and I guess. JJ, when you look at this particular team and the way they played tonight, the new state champion Brookhaven Bearcats, you got to mention one word. That word is speed. I tell you, they've got a ton of speed, even more than I thought during the regular season when they were playing. They do this to a great team. You know that they've got a lot of speed. And congratulations to First City League School what from Columbus to ever win a state title, and they, they earned it out there tonight. You know, going into this game, Brookhaven was only av allowing their opponents to score 5.4 yards per game. The most points they had given up all season was 14 points. So if I went to this, if I went into this game, I said they won 20. They allowed 21 points. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe me if I said they scored, but uh, they won the game. But they did. As a matter of fact, they doubled them up, 42-21 again. The final in this D2 state championship game. All right, let's go down on the field now for the D2 runner-up trophy presentation. The Avon Lake Shoreman about to and now, their runners up trophy. Dr. Dan Ross, Ohio High School Athletic Association Commissioner, and Assistant Commissioner Henry Saborniak, assisted by OHSAA Board of Control members Bill Koppel and Mark Princehorn, will present the 2004 Division II runner up trophy to the outstanding football team, the Shoreman of Avon Lake High School. Dan Ross shaking hands with some of the Avon Lake seniors. Bobby Doyle. Dan Ross, of course, strong ties to Avon Lake. He was the superintendent of the Avon Lake School District before assuming his duties now as the commissioner of the Ohio High School Athletic Association and certainly has a strong bond with that school Coach district. Coach DeLugas, Shortman, Captain, all the fans from Avon Lake. You guys have established a tremendous tradition. 29 and 0. There's a lot of teams that would love to be here tonight, and you are here. You played with a lot of class, and your fans have come all the way from Avon Lake. Let's give them a round of applause for the ball game this evening. On behalf of the Ohio High School Athletic Association, the Board of Control, and the 750 high schools that are members of the Ohio High School Athletic Association, we'd like to present to you the trophy for runner-up in the state of Ohio, Division II. That's yeah, right, hold it up. The runner-up trophy to Avon Lake, senior Ian Pace getting to Hoist the trophy first. Bobby Doyle now getting a touch of the hardware. It's not what they wanted, but as Dan Ross mentioned, a lot of schools would have loved to have had the chance to play for a championship on this Friday evening. And in moments, the Columbus Brookhaven Bearcats will get their chance on the podium to accept their long-awaited goal, the championship trophy in Division II in the state of Ohio. The Brookhaven Bearcats finishing we'll up at 15 0. With a commemorative football for their participation in the 2004 State Football Championships. Bearcat seniors first onto the podium. Dominic Jones, Melvin Jackson. There's Tom Blake, the head coach. 
Thanks to big old Preston King. <laughs> Preston King's going to watch that broadcast and wonder, why didn't I get that interception? <laughs> <laughs> and again, Dan and Ross. And now, Dr. Dan Ross, Commissioner and Assistant Commissioner Henry Zaborniak, assisted by Ohio High School Athletic Association Board of Control members Mark Princehorn and Bill Koppel, will now present the 2004 Divisions II State Championship Trophy to the outstanding football team, the Bearcats of Columbus Brookhaven High School. Bearcat fans, was it worth the trip? Coach Blake, Bearcats, you made history tonight. Your first trip to the state tournament, and you're bringing home the championship. Also, we made history tonight. Also, we made history tonight. This is the first Columbus City League team to bring home a football championship. On behalf of the Ohio High School Athletic Association, our member schools and board of control, we'd like to present you the Division II State Ohio Championship. As many players as possible trying to get a hand on that championship trophy for Brookhaven, and you can't blame them. The Bearcats winning the title here tonight, dethroning Avon Lake. 